we gotta deal with some of this other stuff but uh welcome 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 hopefully more people pop in i mean they will uh let me just uh send this out to people i don't know i can let people know and then we will do a quick disclaimer going into this uh Uh, going into the pod, and then we will be good. Goody, goody, goody. Good times to be had by all. Uh, I'm excited for this. Uh, Right in Danabos, Dylan's, Social Sarah. I'm like the only one who does. Their video a month. They went to. Please. All right, I'm there. Uh, if you do, Discord, join it. I'm part of the uh, the group. Enjoy. Uh, being part of that so we have the debate and this debate is on uh, we are doing minimum wage um, so this should be an interesting one uh, it's been a while since we've done a minimum wage debate also uh, the last two debates we have been on uh, somebody has advocated for bombing another country um, pretty much out of the blue I don't expect to hear somebody bombing another country in this one, but uh, you never know when that's going to come up, so it could happen. Uh, if you are new, please follow. Please, if you can, give a subscription. Um, if you don't want to put in your own money, then you can add a. Uh, then you can um, attach your Amazon Pro your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account and do a free subscription. Um, other than that, we will be. Uh, and now to soon uh, Monday we do have a debate. At least that is the plan. Um, we're still I'm still talking to North Countrymen about trying to figure out what we want to cover for the um, the Hans Chestheimer debate. So if you are somebody who wants us has uh, ideas for a debate, the uh, we were going to do the the um, uh, what was it called? We were going to do the moratorium, but I I covered that on Friday. He took a look at it and he said there wasn't that much. So I think right now we're just kind of waiting for the filibuster one. Um, as for next week, we're thinking next Sunday should tentatively is the uh, the independent thought debate. With uh, with that panel, there will be five people on it. I just know so far it's going to be me, him, and Hardwin Sock, who I enjoy talking to. So it'll be good. Um, so yeah, I will, uh, as the information for this one comes out, I will post it as always. Um, feel free to, to join along, but this will be uh, that. So let's let's hop into the what we're looking for. Uh, all right, I have to watch this. something else. Uh, I have to do it through my other program to get it done. Oh, Zoom meeting. Hold on, that should be here. You need to choose an application. Meeting. 
Okay. All right. So we are connected. Hello. Yo. All right. So you can hear me. All good. I can hear you just fine. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, uh, who's this? This is uh David for Fresh Faces No Ideas. Got it. All right. Sorry, I forgot your name. So. It's all right. Um, you don't hear any uh, whirring in the background, right? Nope. Yes. All right. Thank you, CTV, for telling me about the, the noise gate thing. So I fixed the problem with my laptop. Yep. All right. So I've changed your name. Okay. So. Uh, yes. Hold on. Uh, let me pull this back up. All right, then. Uh, that was the wrong button. Yes. Yes. All right. Let me set the video. Uh, should we snap cam? Yep. There, all right, there we go. Let's got that set up. Excellent. All righty. Good to see you again. Thanks yeah, for coming back. Dude, I'm I'm happy to do this whenever. Uh, I, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed the last one. Um, so far, there now has been a running theme in my last two debates that somebody has advocated for bombing another country, um, kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get to that in this debate, but I'm excited for it. Well, I, I can assure you no bomb droppings will be occurring in this one, so... But I don't know I, if you can assure that. You never know who's going to say what. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, so the last guy, uh, Justin, like, he's always had views like that. So he always goes to the extreme with his views. So, <laughs> but, um, like, uh, um, so I've got Flurry, uh, Chance of Flurry coming on. I got Teal coming on. And I got uh, New Socialist Eric coming on as well. Oh, New so. Socialist Eric. I like him. And the other two, I don't know who they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've probably, I don't know if you've seen Teal. He's been on Politically Provoked. And I have then, not actually uh, seen politically provoked. Okay, okay. Well, uh, Teal's a good guy. He's a good dude. And uh, Flurry and I have had a few conversations. Uh, uh, New socialist area. I've never actually really spoken to him much, except I I thought he would be good for this conversation we were going to have. So I think that's he would why be, be very good yeah. for this conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like well, the, the conversations we've had. Yeah. Oh well, so far, like everybody else has really enjoyed. Like the conversation we have because it's like it's not blood sports. It's just people having a conversation about what we think and what we think could be better, which I think is exactly the way – that's the way I like to have it, actually. I mean, blood sports is fine for, like, the first five minutes, but after a while it kind of gets boring because I feel it kind of degrades away from the conversation. Oh, here comes New Socialist. What's going on, New Socialist? Your camera's kind of skewed. Yo, why are you sideways, man? His audio's still connecting, so. Ah. Can't hear you yet. <laughs> oh, I'm very excited. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we are. Yeah, you know you're sideways, right? Oh, great. How did I do that? Uh, I didn't know there was an option for that. Holy shit. <laughs> do you want your camera to be upside down, inverted, and inverse colors? That's the default setting. <laughs> <laughs> All good, man. Uh, yeah, we, we got a little bit of time anyway, so we got we still have like less than 30 minutes, so I like to come on early that way we can get all the sound checks out of the way and shit, so. Yeah, I was. that's why I was coming in early, just to talk to chat for and then you're like, bam, I thought I, was, I, thought I got it right this time. So. Yeah. Next time we start at seven fifteen. <laughs> All good. How do how do I look that what? How did you do that? <laughs> oh, there, yep. I know what I did. And, oh, there and we if, are. If, if, awesome. if you go to if you go to the settings in the top corner, there's a thing I didn't realize it was there. Uh, the top corner of the uh, preview screen mm -hmm. it says rotate ninety degrees. Like here comes Tio. Is my is my, are my graphics flipped? Oh, everything looks fine. Everything looks good. Okay, and I get my volume. Yep, I hear you, Tio. Can you guys hear and see me? Uh, I can't see you yet. Your camera's not on. We can hear you. Oops, okay. My headset connected to my phone. Hold on. All right, no worries. Yeah, the only reason I was asking if it's flipped because the way I see it on my Zoom meeting screen is that the uh, logo at the top looks like it's inverted. The at new source is there, but no, everything looks fine. 
And everything was put on my end, so. Okay. Now I can't hear anything. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yep. We hear you. We hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, but it's going through the wrong speaker. Let me see if I can get my sound to change source. All right, then. No worries. Oh um, my! And I hate it because my text to speech doesn't work on some programs, and it works on others. So. Okay, let's see. I guess it's using default. Maybe let me see. Sorry. You're good, dude. Oh, I hate being blind. It sucks. I can't. I'm, I'm using my magnification software, but I, I lose my mouse so easy. <laughs> okay, it goes. Yeah, I don't use my computer that much anymore, so I'm really slow on it. <laughs> Gotcha. Okay. Right click. Hey, quick technical question. Now, I don't know what it is about like uh, the uh, other streaming like website StreamYard, but for some reason, it caused my little bootleg computer to overheat. Mm -hmm. When Discord, I use Discord streaming all the time. I have people like, you know, nine screens open, no problem, no overheats. But for some reason, if I do StreamYards on my browser, Chrome browser for some reason it 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 took it takes my like temperature number three sensor to like eighty eight degrees or really? like so yeah I don't know that was to me too it it like kills my laptop so fast I mean my computer runs okay it's not I mean I mean then Discord I don't have any problems with it just runs just fine like even now by things saying it's seventy degrees it'll hopefully between sixty seven and seventy degrees which I think it's a bit of an offset but it's like and I have a fan blowing into my case too, like, a, like a, one of those little tornado fans too. It's like, really, God, it's an AMD processor. Like, are they really supposed to run that hot? Yeah. I I got a digital storm computer, so it's made for stuff like this. So I don't have that problem. <laughs> Not trying to flex. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I gotta upgrade my set, and then I'll then I'll be happier. Yeah, I I tell you, this digital storm is worth every penny. It's and like, what's amazing is that their customer service is great. Like when I talked to them about it, it was like, I'm thinking about getting a new computer. And they're like, well, what do you want to get? And I told them what I wanted. And I thought about getting one of their workstations, right? They says, well, what do you want to do with the workstation? And I told them what I wanted. And it's like, don't get the workstation. You're not going to use it to its full potential. Uh, Jones, thank you this for is the, what we uh, recommend. So, um, thank you for the, yeah, uh, the, the sub. I really do appreciate it. Um, as a, as a, cause you're new here. So you haven't been able Somebody to, uh, muted uh, let me just give you the discord too. So you can, can you guys hear me now? We hear stuff. You. Yep. Um, um, does it sound like it's coming through my mic or through my computer's laptop? Uh, because you're you're part of the uh, your subscriber, um, you can join when we do uh, when I get about ten subscribers. We're going to do a uh, a conspiracy theory episode just for subscribers. So if you have any conspiracy theory, COVID is fake. Uh, David Stern rigged the election. Um, rigged yes, David Stern rigged the 2020 election. But the um, the uh, the NBA um, election for Patrick Ewing. Uh, the earth is round. Any of this shit, totally allowed to do that. That's what I'm looking forward to because and the reason for this is when I first started, like like a month ago when I started this, um, a uh, what I was talking to like a, a flat earther and I said, listen, if once I hit uh, affiliate and then I get to um, uh, and then I get to uh, subscribers, we'll do something for that people. So that's the goal is to get a conspiracy theory one and then once we hit a hundred people. We will do, um, I'll create a, a Reddit, so then like once a month we can do, um, uh, okay buddies. So that's, that's the plan for subscribers going forward. The more subscribers we get, the more, uh, the more emotes and stuff we have. I do have the next emote set up, I just need more subscribers so I can get the points to unlock it. But the, uh, the emote is going to be a, a screen grab from, uh, one of my, my previous, um, streams. I was doing, watching a, uh. I was watching a video for uh, the the five. I was talking to Gerald Rivera, and one of the things that uh, Greg Gutfield was was like this, and it, it I just had a great screen grab of it. And it's going to be a good one. But uh, I do appreciate the subscription. Again, if you don't want to actually put your own money into the subscription, you can tag your uh, um uh you can tag your your Twitch account to your Amazon Prime account, and then Jeff Bezos paid me for me because apparently I'm an Amazon worker now. Um, I don't have to pee in a bucket, and I don't have to shit in a bag, but I'm still an Amazon worker. All right, so let's get back to this debate. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. I'm good. How are you? Hey. All right. Hey. Uh, What's up? Hey, so, uh, Flurry, do you want me to keep it on for Carl? Do you want me to go uh, Chance of Flurry? 
You can uh, keep it with Carl if you want. That's fine. Okay, cool. All right. All right, gents. Uh, well, first things first, I want to say thank you to everybody for uh, being a part of this this evening. I definitely – I'm gonna, looking forward to this conversation here. So this is usually how I uh, – I don't know if anybody's had a chance to uh, go through it now. Uh, Fresh Faces has been a part of my uh, – has been on here before. Um, Tio says he's listened uh, to my uh, platform and – um, Flurry or uh, Carl says that he's listening as well. So basically, how I kind of run things, right? What I do is, is I usually have a pre-roll, like a, uh, like a before like things get started. And what I usually do that for is I check to make sure that everything is rolling good on the stream. Because last time I actually had a bit of a problem with the stream rolling. So what I do is I like to have it. Um, I'll have like the screen rolling first. Says okay, please wait while the the host readies the feed. And then after that, once I realize everything's good. I'm going to jump over to my intro, and once I go into my intro, I'm then going to go into my uh, ramble. I'm going to say, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the pa another panel brought to you by the Alex Kirsch Project. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a quick say, hit like, share, subscribe, the whole nine yards, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick introduction. I'm going to say, Fresh Faces New Ideas was here. And then please welcome Blind Teo, New Socialist Era, and Chance of Flurry. Flurry. And so then once I do that, then I'm going to give everybody a chance to introduce themselves, and I'll just kind of go in clockwise order at this point. I'm going to say Fresh, then New Socialist Area, then Tio, and then uh, Carl. So at that point, I'm just going to ask you to just introduce yourself, say, hey, my name is such and such, or this is what I go by. You can find me on Twitter, YouTube, Discord, Twitter, uh, I mean, uh, Twitch, whatever you want to go by, and let me know what you lean politically, and just go from there. And then afterwards, uh, then I'm going to just jump right into it. It's like, okay, so now we're just going to jump right in the topic. I'm going to say the federal minimum wage, the fruits of your labor, how much is it worth? That's the top title of the show. Um, and then after that, I'm going to do like a quick backstory about the federal minimum wage and just kind of like a, give a brief overview about it. And then just kind of talk about like what people have to pay into in order to kind of survive in this economy. And then afterwards, I'm going to give everybody here a one to five minute i'm i know i'm stealing that from like other people's platforms but i'm giving everybody a chance to give like a one to five minute overview of what they feel about the federal minimum wage what it should be what they think about it what have you it could be whatever you want to say about it and then afterwards then i'm going to jump into my questions and then i'm just going to kind of make it randomized and here's what i'm going to do every time i ask a question i'm going to pick one person and then i was and then after that person's done i'll jump to the next person and i'm it's just going to go in a random order if that's cool with y'all so roll a d4 yep, yep. so good. yep and so once all that's over and done with at once the uh panel's over with it shouldn't be any longer than I, I don't anticipate this going any longer than an hour and a half maybe two hours but once we start wrapping up then i'm gonna have everybody give final thoughts then i'm gonna give my final assessment and then after that um i'm gonna do my close uh do a closeout screen and then i'm gonna let you all know when uh we're done uh just remain for a little uh, for a few minutes afterwards uh, so we can just do a quick assessment of how everything went. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll let you know once we're clear. So once I say, have a good evening, everybody, uh, try not to say anything, and I'll let you know when we're off. Sound good? All right, you? excellent. All right, excellent. So uh, before we actually get started, we're going to do a quick test stream to make sure everything looks good. So let me get rid of that one, that screen, that screen. Yeah, I usually like to do uh, test streams just to make sure everything's fine and dandy. So, all right, so uh, test streaming starting in three, two, one. All right, so it's coming up on the screen now. Okay, uh, Fresh, go ahead and say something. Uh, we're good. Test, test, test. One, two, three. All right. New socialist. Testing, testing. One, two, three, three, two, one, and all that wonderful. Can't count higher than that. Oh, it's gonna be a fun debate then. <laughs> all right, that's good. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, uh, Tio. Check mic, check mic, test one, two, check one, two. That good? Can you hear me? Okay. All right. Carl? Test one, two, three, test. All right. 
All right, excellent. All right, everything came by good. Test stream is complete. All right. Appreciate it, gents. Yep. So I'm pretty sure, like, y'all know, is like I like to run a very, very uh, just chill stream. You know, like, if you guys want to grab, like, an adult beverage and just kick back, relax, I'm cool with that. You know, I try not to really, you know, break balls around here. So I just like to have good conversations with people and get everybody's points of view. So I um, like to come talk in good faith. So, but, you know, I'm pretty sure we've already got that part covered. So, but again, I appreciate everybody's uh, contributions this evening. So I, I anticipate this on being a good uh, panel of discussion. So. Ooh. Yep. But if at any point that uh, y'all want to host a stream or something like that and want to bring me on, just shoot me a message. I'll let you know if I'm available or not. So you can Sounds usually good. find, yep. You can usually find me either like in the daytime, like going on discord um, and just uh, uh, having fun discussions there or just, doing whatever so <laughs> yeah. how's everybody's day been great pretty, good. Uh, pretty relaxing y'all doing anything breaking free, exciting breaking, breaking free lo rusty lugs from my rear tires on my jeep because I gotta change the brake pads on them tomorrow <laughs> nice that nice fun. somebody that does their own brakes that's, that's good so few people do that shit these days man <laughs> yeah, I ain't trying to pay some shop to mess it up screw that <laughs> right it's not even that hard on yeah i know right well i'm turn on silent i'm oh, terrible when it comes to mechanics well to yeah. be fair some cars are pains in the ass i guess special tools from like mm -hmm. the it's, it can be but cheap jerkies pff, i mean older ones especially you just get a basic set of wrenches and tools and you're you're pretty much in there if you got no other to do too watch some youtube videos and you're good you're you're a regular mechanic but I do that because I want to make sure the jobs are done right myself. And if something goes sideways, at least I have an idea what maybe happened instead of like, oh my God, what did they do? They're never going to admit they messed up. Yeah. But, no, of course not. No, and, and I get that. But it's just like when it comes to mechanics and I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm a terrible mechanic. I, I, I suck terribly at mechanics. So I just try not to attempt it. Yeah, I, I hear you. Some people are like, I don't know. Even I, when I first started off, one too good, but just practice, 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 and getting used to it. And then you're comfortable with it, and you learn more. And, but that mm -hmm. all depends on what you want to do. But I know, because I like to do it for myself, because I like to know what's going on. And, it, you know, it's just I don't know, a bit of, bit of what, what, do, what do you call it, like mental security or mental, you know, mental mm -hmm. ease. No, no. Sure the job's done right. But. Uh, no, that makes sense, because, like, I I'm that way because uh, – so one of the things I've really discovered that I like doing is I like to cook, right? And I do a lot of cooking and because, uh, uh, you know, right now I'm retired right now. I'm getting ready to go back into the workforce here shortly. But um, my wife works during the daytime. And so I spend a lot of time just like, you know, doing laundry and stuff like that. But I do actually like cooking because, I don't know, there's something like very therapeutic about doing it, honestly. And I really like doing it, not just because I have to, but it's because like there's kind of like a, a little joy of like, the reward you receive at the end of it, especially when it turns out good, because I, I used to be very self-conscious because there are some things I might cut corners on, but cooking is something I follow every direction to the freaking letter because I'm just like, you know, very rarely will I kind of experiment outside to see like if I can do something better about it, you know, but it's just, I don't know. It's just some, it's, it's kind of like that satisfaction, like kind of like how you talk about with your shocks, that satisfaction of it working out and everything coming together. That's the same satisfaction I get from cooking, honestly. It's just like that satisfaction that comes from it afterwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, accomplishing, yeah. using your skills and accomplishing something useful yeah. is definitely rewarding. Yeah. But I, I'm not going to go in the field of cooking. I mean, that might sound mm -hmm. selfish, but it's just I couldn't do it. No, it's just Yeah, and then you takes the joy out of it. It's yeah. a job. Like sometimes music becomes work to me because it's my job, right? Like so, yeah. If it's something you enjoy, you don't necessarily want to work in it. You like yeah. want it to be your 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 outlet. Yeah. I was playing today. It was a good time. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got about ten. Yeah, minutes. but uh, yeah, but if you guys ever mess around with like stubborn lugs, oh, I had to drill out the other side last time. I take a tire off, but this time I got lucky and. Use a big cheater bar on them and haven't had a little bit of help. And oh, mm -hmm. thank God. They thank God they broke free and they didn't have to do the drill now. Oh, God. Was, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've worked on various things like you know, medium stuff, like, uh, of course, brake pads, oil changes, filters, starters, radiators, thermostat, uh, 
what else? Spark plugs, wires, for, you know, what else? Um, U joints. U joints are easy to do. Like they're easy to do in principle, but putting, you know, breaking them apart, getting them apart is one thing. Putting it back together and those keeping those needle bearings from falling out. Ugh. I don't want. <laughs> And, and the last time, about a couple months ago, I had to replace four of those bad boys in my Jeep. The axle U-joints and the drive shaft U-joints. That was an all-day event. And a um, two-day event, actually. Yeah. But yeah, wheel bearings or wheel help assemblies, things like that, or uh, CV shafts. I mean, nothing, that too, nothing too crazy. But it definitely, for these older vehicles, where it's easy to work on, like, might as well just do it myself, do the part, and save, like, $500. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. And just... Makes perfect yeah. sense. Makes perfect I at least sense. so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so, um, uh, new socialist, is there is there is like a certain name you want me to call you by, or just say new socialist anytime I call on you? Uh, people call me Rico Suave. <laughs> Rico Suave, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody always laughs. Why? No one believes me. That I'm Rico Suave. <laughs> they laugh some more. You see? Right, There's Joe's. Just... Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe's fine. Joe. Joe's fine. Okay, gotcha. I tell people that and laugh. One guy one time was like, you ain't Rico Suave. Your mm-hmm. mom thinks I'm Rico Suave. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yo soy Rico Suave. Yeah, I'm rich and smooth. <laughs> that was smooth as sandpaper, I know. But, yeah. <laughs> Gotta have the jokes. If I can't make them, if I can't make them look good at me, I might as well make them laugh. I don't know. There you go. It's funny, the, Rico does mean rich, but it really means more rich, like in, uh, uh, like food is rich, you know? It can mean rich, like money, but it kind of means both. Yeah, they're like rich, like it's super sweet, super, yeah. Exactly. That kind yeah, of rich. Yeah. Oh, man. I suppose that's why people laugh at me when guys like, ha ha, you ain't a Rico song, oh, man. I was like, you saw me, motherfucker. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just. Anyway, I was hoping some right wingers would be on tonight, so the American flag behind me would trigger them a little bit. You know, I <laughs> it always does. I've always tried inviting people that from the right to my panels. I've only had one so far, and this is my fourth panel so far. So, um, oh, I and I, I don't know. Maybe they just don't want to be a part of it. That's cool. I, that's fine. I mean, I, I've sent out you know messages via Discord, Twitter, and you know, uh, I don't use Facebook much anymore. So, I. It's not going to go very well, so I just kind of like, you know, whatever. It's just I, I just kind of put out feelers to people that I think would be good for the panel, and if they don't show up, they don't show up. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if all you can get is like centrist or neoliberal types, that's good enough for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, for some reason, weird reason, I have a better time getting across the ideas of workplace democracy to people who are somewhat conservative versus someone who's neoliberal. Now, I still have success to a degree, Mm-hmm. But it's for me, it seems like neoliberals have that mindset. I don't know if any of y'all like that, but now that's me or many men, not all, but many have that mindset like, this is as far as the left I'm going to go, and I ain't going to go no farther than that. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm just not. And it's just, like a brick wall. And I, 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 I kind of see why, because I was, I was like that for a little bit myself, but then I found myself like, what's the point of, <laughs> you know, what, what, what's the point of holding back if, if what's going on is actually, you know, the case. I mean, what's what's it means? Nothing hurt, nothing harmful in exploring the ideas. And if you don't like it, you don't like it. But I don't know. Some people seem like really beyond hesitant, it's beyond yeah. rationality. But yeah, well, well, it's propaganda, right? Yeah. Like, well, but this is the reason I want to host yeah. these panels because, like, even if like at the end of the day I don't agree with somebody, it I like to bring like a different point of view or like I just like to bring random people on or not really. I just like to bring people on that I feel can can contribute. And they might say something I would never ever actually thought about that before because, you know, Tio and I, him and I have been just like talking all the time, like when it comes to economics and like pol- foreign policy and stuff like that, you know, and he'll say something that's like, wow, I never really thought about it like that before. And, you know, him and I, him and I might uh, disagree on some things, but, you know, like him and I have great discussions always, which is why one of the reasons I want to bring him on because economics is something that he's very passionate about, too, so – and I knew this was – this was something he was really going to want to be on, and I, I definitely wanted to bring him on for this, so – Hey, a good oh, question. Everyone, hey, everyone, has anyone heard of a Discord server called Blue Politics? Yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't really I'm been on in it. there. I'm on it. I'm on it, and it's it's a pre, it's pretty the things under control, but it's, it can get a little rowdy as always. But it's definitely worth checking out if you want to start connecting to talking to other people. It that's got a shit ton of people on her. One night, 
was a couple months ago. They were doing like a little debate topic panel on universal basic income, and I just popped in the chat, and, you know, just listening. And I told them, like, hey, listen, because I've hung out in there before. They'd see me, my name, you know, it stands out for a reason. So I picked it. But so, yeah, we've seen your name in there. If you want to come on and just – Give some of your thoughts, and I came on there defending UBI. And say, hey, look, dude, we're doing a more expensive, less effective thing, letting poverty exist the way it does. Doing a UBI would eliminate most of these side effects of poverty, you know, symptoms, and people, would, you know, get money and you know, be able to spend on the things they need. So we're doing the more expensive, less effective thing right now, and we're sandbagging our own economic growth in comparison. You know, so I had to keep hammering that over and over because people are like, how can we afford it? Like, I don't know. How can we afford a thing that's going to end up being cheaper and better? I don't know. You know, well, the, the better care for all argument. Well, who, who just wrote the, uh, which study was it that came out like yesterday? Was it the Hills st uh, argument where it was like, oh yeah, America was still paying infinitely more than, uh, than we should be for healthcare. We're like dead last out of yeah. like the 11 countries. It's, it's pretty bad, honestly. So I see all those. Right. Bef okay, so before we get started, if anybody needs to use a bathroom break, uh, now it's time to do it. I'm going to use it real quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm going to go refill my coffee. I'm sitting on my toilet now. <laughs> well, <that's... laughs> that would be convenient for the long streams, right? Yeah, for sure. It's, it's just, it's just like idiocracy watching TV. Go away, I'm baiting and you flush the toilet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sad how like, the world that movie could, do, could be like running now. I think the people in that movie were smarter than some of the people I've seen on the internet lately. I mean, they maybe passed already. Some of them, yeah. yeah. It's been a Ding. wild couple of weeks. No, it's just like, it wasn't like I would, I would Einstein was like, what's as great of the universe of human stupidity? I was like, human stupidity be, seems to be much <laughs> more in abundance, Dude, it's much more like infinite. Poor Darwin, man. That guy's given out so many awards this year. <laughs> people just like the award uh, i don't want to win yeah you're right i mean i, I mean like, i feel bad for these people no, like, no, like, no. like well, I, I, should, I should say like i should say the people who are perpetuating the myths and the myths information they're knowingly doing it those are the people i don't feel sorry oh, for Candace when they Owens this week it. has been so bad on like you on twitter i i covered her one day and then i like i didn't do it another day yeah. and, like it went off and i'm like i need, i need to deal with this it you can only cover it so much the people I feel bad for the people who are bought into it because it's this constant fear mongering, listening from her friends and other sources, propaganda, and they buy into it and source poor saps buy into it. So I feel a little bit bad for them at least. Like when they get taken in, oh, I'm gonna take the vaccine. Next thing you know, they're on a ventilator. Please pray for me, and they're gone. And it's or, like, or vac uh, vaccinate me as I'm getting in incubated. Yeah, thoughts and prayers. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> but the people who are pushing the pushing the conspiracy theories, especially the ones that I think know better, oh, the, 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 if, if, the if, if they go, I doctors. don't give a fuck about them. The front, they, they're like they getting they trick these people into taking uh, the horse pills. <laughs> with, with, Bates. I mean, the I can't believe this is like a legal thing for the 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 uh, the frontline doctors to be doing the, the American front. Like they are such a scam organization. It is so wild. Uh, I had somebody argue to me that their their lawsuit was a thing, and I looked into it for like eight seconds, and I just I was just laughing my ass off, just like everything that in this lawsuit is a lie. They were just making up numbers. They're just doing discredited stuff. But people listen to this. It's it's the this it's you know one of the guys was at the direction. One of them is the the demon sperm lady. It's it's all over the place. Well, I mean the demon sperm lady. Now that's some credentials right there. You got to listen. That's to her. The, she's demon like the head for the, uh, the, the uh, frontline American doctors. They're, they're, it's wild, man. That All was, right, that was a thing. It, that was out of control. All right, we're gonna get ready to start streaming here shortly. All right. All right. Stream starting in three, two, one. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another panel brought to you by the Alex Kirsch Project. If you're a new member, do not forget to show this channel some love by liking, sharing, and subscribing. 
feel free to leave some comments in the comment section. And if you have any questions throughout the panel, feel free to drop them and I'll read them. I'd like to take the time to welcome my panel this evening. Coming back for a second go around is Fresh Faces New Ideas. And everyone else, however, is a first timer here on the Alex Curse Project. Welcome Blind Tio, New Socialist Era, Chance of Flurry. Welcome, gentlemen, and feel, please feel free to introduce yourselves before we get into the topic itself. So go ahead and fresh, introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Fresh Faces New Ideas. Uh, I do political streaming. I'm a, a soak dem. Um, I do streaming uh, during the week, 1 p.m. EST. And you can find me uh, on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Fresh Faces New Ideas, or you can find me on uh, Twitter at Faces Ideas, or you can find me on YouTube, which I'm posting more often now on Fresh Faces New Ideas. I'm happy to be back here, and I hope I'll come back for more. Fantastic. All right, New Socialist, what you got? Hey, this is New Socialist Era here, bringing it to you, as I always do. Freedom and liberty style is what I'm all about. been talking politics online for 20-plus years. Not every day, mind you, but 20, still 20 years since the mid, late 90s. But anyway, um, you can find me at, over at YouTube, New Socialist Era. Also, if you follow me over on Twitch at New Socialist Era, I'll follow you back, even if you're right wing or whatever. So anyway, let's see how this goes. Fantastic. Tio. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Blind Tio, uh, legally blind jazz musician and activist. I consider myself an anarcho-pacifist, if you want to get very specific, but uh, just libertarian socialist generally. Um, and you can find me currently. I'm not doing any uh, streaming or projects, uh, but look forward to that doing that soon. But you can find me on the politically provoked Discord pretty much daily. So if you want to uh, find me, you'll find me there. <laughs> All right. Carl? Yeah, uh, my name is Carl Fleury, uh, Chance of Fleury podcast, where you can find me. Um, you can check me out. We're on YouTube, BitChute, uh, Rumble. We're on pretty much every platform. Um, and uh, I'm an, I myself am an anarcho-mutualist. Uh, and, you know, there's a, we do a show where there's, I guess, two of us. And um, I'm opposed by uh, a bit more of a, of a right-wing libertarian. Um, so it's an interesting thing that you guys can check out if uh, you ever want to. So. Fantastic. Well, once again, gentlemen, I appreciate everybody taking the time out of their days to uh, become part of this platform today. So, all right. So tonight's topic is the federal minimum wage, the fruits of your labor. How much is it worth to you, essentially? So a little bit of backstory and a little bit of background about the topic, okay? So when I worked at Norpac, a green bean cannery in the summers of 1999, 2000, and 2001, I worked graveyard before I joined the Army. I was getting – once I left before I – uh, join the army i was getting paid seven dollars and fifty cents an hour however when i started in the summer of 1999 i was getting paid 685 an hour and i thought that was banking however in the last 20 years minimum wage has failed to keep pace with inflation minimum wage as of 19 july 2021 is seven dollars and 25 cents federal and however tipped wages is two dollars and 13 cents inflation rates across the united states is 5.4 percent Cost of living averages at, are at $1,000 to $1,500 per month. This is, includes your accommodation costs, room, and board. Average costs of groceries are about $6,602 to $602 a year with about $2,600 food away from home and about $3,900 food at home. An average citizen in the United States must worry about the following expenses to ensure they can survive in this economy. They have to worry about mortgage, rent, Homeowners and renters insurance, property tax, auto insurance, health insurance, out-of-pocket medical costs, life insurance, electricity and gas, water, sanitation, garbage, groceries, toiletries, and other essentials, car payments, gasoline, public transportation, internet, cell phone or landline, student loan payments, other minimum loan payments, and child care. Now, considering the fact that nowadays you have two parents in a household that need to work in order to keep up with these expenses, the average American works about 34.7 hours per week as of June 2021 which depending on job you have, you could barely be able to scrape by at this point. Congress has consistently been battered down for raising the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour, which there appears to be quite a bit of resistance. Now we're gonna address each of this bit of resistance throughout the panel. So first, I would like for the, each of the panelists to give their points of view on the federal minimum wage and should just go to $15 an hour across the board, or should the federal minimum wage be beneficial to the average American worker to ensure they cannot just make ends meet, but they can also live comfortably. So we're going to start with Carl. What you got? Uh, well, I personally think that the minimum wage is, uh, I mean, currently I'm, so I'm Canadian, so I had to do a bit of research into the numbers uh, in the U.S. 
uh, before coming on the panel, but you know, uh, considering 725 an hour is far lower than you know the uh, like the buying power uh, that we have currently is far less than what we had even in the 1960s. Um, so I mean, it's uh, it hasn't moved in the longest period since uh, the fair election or the fair um, was it Fair Labor Standards Act was implemented. Um, so I mean, I think that it it does need to change. I think that it should be geared in some way to inflation if we're gonna have a minimum wage. Um, you know, a lot of countries already have this system implemented where, uh, you know, there's kind of a formula that would make gradual changes year by year based on inflation, um, you know, that way that we're not stuck with this, this system where, you know, every few years we have to slap businesses with like this big change, um, you know, which, which can affect them in, in some ways, but obviously uh, not as much as, as uh, generally touted in the media. Um, so I, I personally think that, you know, at the very least, the wage should be up. Uh, but I mean, my personal stance is generally based on worker ownership. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a little bit of a different system. But if we're going to argue a wage, then yeah, I obviously think it should be raised quite a bit right now. Um, if we kept up with, with inflation, I think that uh, what I was reading is it would be about over just over $24 an hour today or some something of that sort. So I think that, you know, we could probably work our way uh, somewhere along those lines anyway. Okay. Teal? All right. Um, also, like Carl, I'm pushing for a different type of future, but uh, let's talk about the current system and when it was implemented. Uh, so uh, minimum wage was started as part of the New Deal. I believe it was around 1938 it was began. Um, and if you look, um, the rules for raising minimum wage, with Congress had to do it every year. Dumb idea to begin with, right? But if you look, like they did it at first as like a little look, we raised your minimum wage so like so everybody would like enjoy what Congress did, like a little bump to their approval rating, right? So if you look, I have a graph, maybe we can show it later, I don't know, Alex, I'll send it to you in Discord, but um, it has a graph of, of when the federal minimum wage, well, I'll do it backwards so that way, see so it makes more sense. So like they were raising it every year, every year, every year, every year, in line with the cost of living until they reached, guess who, Mr. Ronald Reagan, Mr. Uh, going away from Keynesian economics to trickle-down economics. And then you'll see, like, the whole Reagan presidency, the minimum wage did not move at all. Then Bush raised it some. Then uh, Clinton raised it some. And Obama raised it some. But instead of, of a steady increase that, that, um, that wouldn't affect small businesses negatively, because of Reagan doing that no raising for eight years, now raising it will... Is, is detrimental to small businesses, right? So the ideal plan to me is, is what we do with Social Security, right? So I'm, I'm on Social Security because I'm blind. And we have what's, what are called cost of living adjustments every year, meaning our, the pay we get from Social Security goes up every year based on the cost of living, not inflation, because that's a different graph. I, I could talk about that like, as a tangent. But really, uh, the minimum wage should go up with cost of inflation. I mean, the cost of living index, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have graphs uh, that I sent to Alex that show um, both of those, uh, um, you know, trends, et, yeah. et, et cetera, too. So that's the problem. We should have a uh, uh, minimum wage be tied automatically. Like, it, doesn't, it shouldn't take an act of Congress. It should just be automatically based on the cost of living. Okay. Uh, Joe, what you got? Well, the thing I say about the federal minimum wage is that yeah, these uh, big money interests, of course, who are doing whatever they can to put or to have politicians in office to keep the minimum wage from going up just to maximize their profits. A lot of these businesses businesses could pay their employees at least $15 an hour. They just don't choose to. And the ones they can't are usually on the edge of closing down anyway. Uh, businesses, private, private businesses especially, they close down all the time due to one reason or another. So using that as an excuse to keep Oh, what about the poor businesses that are going to be affected by this? Like, if they're treading water as it is, they're about to go down the toilet anyway. So, might as well just with uh, incremental steps over, say, five years or so, something like that, ramp it up slowly to fifteen dollars an hour. And if we got to provide some subsidies for these smaller businesses to basically get like wage rebates or something like that along the lines to stay open and afloat while they can adjust, great. I'm all for that too. Um, 
it's a matter of all these other countries, they've figured out how to get a much more livable wage. Um, again, that's, that's the key, much more livable. Because livable can be subjective based on person to person. So at least something that's <laughs> above $10 an hour, they figured it out. And their economies haven't collapsed and in, in on themselves and been destroyed. So if they can do it, we can do it too. Um, and then anybody out there who wants to be like, oh, don't, we can't compare the United States to any other nation. Well, the thing is, those are usually the people who say America's number one. So, you know, it's like <laughs> you're, you, when, when, you, when you say that, you're comparing the United States to the countries you deal with. So, yeah, it, it's high time we do it. It's a matter of getting the right kind of politicians elected to actually go in there and do it. Get rid of the Curious and Cinema and Joe Manchin types, especially. They're good for nothing, even though they're going to have their nice little cushy uh, lobbying jobs after they get voted out. Um, the sooner the better. Um, but that's the way I see it. There definitely needs to be a floor to, so people, excuse me, so people don't get taken advantage of by these um, uh, privateer types who just only want to care about maximizing profits, exto- ignoring externalities, that sort of thing, to make a much more I'd say say sustainable economic system from the from the bottom up. Okay, fair enough. All right, uh, fresh. What you got? Um, Your opening statement. Yeah. So I look. We're all in agreement. It needs to be higher. Um, how we tie that to different things is is uh, probably up for debate, and ultimately where the system will be probably up for debate. Um, yeah, we we know it needs to be higher. Uh, we know there was just a, recently a study released that. Um, nowhere in the country can you afford a two-bedroom apartment on minimum wage, and in most of the country you can't afford it on a uh, a single wage, uh, a, a, a single bedroom in a single wage. Um, whether or not it should ultimately be the same for every state is is a different matter because what cost you know what the cost of living in um, West Virginia is significantly lower than what it is in California. So that's where we have to you know we can we give and take. Um, ultimately, there's going to be some type of uh, sticker shock to some of these smaller businesses when the, the minimum wage is increased because of how far it has to jump to hit a acceptable level. Um, we can obviously separate that from taking some of the subsidies from the corporations like uh, oil oil subsidies that they don't need it anymore and help subsidize smaller businesses. Also for this idea of um, my business can't function if I don't pay my workers starvation wages probably means that you should not be in business anyway. And as for um, the other thing is, is corporate massive corporations like Walmart used to be able to pay their workers nothing, and then they could uh, force them to be on food stamps so they can maximize their profit as well. Um, there's there's a lot into this. I think most of us are in, in agreement on on most of this. Uh, I, it's just working out the details at this point. Okay. Yeah, that's completely fair. So, so here's my first question. Okay. So. When it comes down now, um, now Joe, uh, new socialist Eric, actually kind of hit on this a little bit. So, fortunately, this is actually kind of like a nice segue into my first question. So, as we know, one of our biggest problems right now is, for example, you get the mom paw shops like in a little small town, like out in the middle of like Kansas or whatever small town you might have, right? You got a mom paw shop that's like struggling to make ends meet, and then next thing you know. Here comes a Walmart. Here comes a McDonald's. That's gonna kind of just kind of swallow these businesses up. Or hey, let's go big. They're bringing in the Amazon factory, and the Amazon factory is going to bring in these fifteen dollar uh, hour jobs, and it's basically gonna swallow these small businesses up. Okay. So here's my first question. Okay, should the federal minimum wage across the United States be no less than fifteen dollars an hour? But could or even though that could possibly hurt small businesses who cannot compete with major corporations like McDonald's and Walmart, et cetera, because there's a lot of major corporations out there that can afford to do so, but maybe they're just choosing not to. Now, do you think that this could possibly actually swallow up small businesses? And we'll start with you, Joe. It can. Uh, business, like I said before, businesses get swallowed for other reasons too, mismanagement or just bad luck. Um, like I said, I don't like, it, you being used as an excuse, hey, we can't, what about those relatively few small pops, mom and pop shops, you know, can't do it because, you know, they always get hurt and they'll shut down. But like I said before, we can always provide subsidies. I mean, you know, the federal government and their uh, big money buddies, hey, they, they they don't mind that money. But, and if you offer this money to, or the funding to people who are only small businesses and they thumb their nose at it, hey, that's the choice that they made. We gave them a way out to be to keep their business open. And really, if you increase the minimum wage, fifteen dollars an hour, people have more money to spend. And if anything, there was this um, ice cream shop in New York who recently, I'm sure a few of us have seen the article. So, uh, 
tried everything under the sun, every little thing. Tried getting employees from other stores or whatever, and and they did. They, they, they finally did the last thing. I don't know, for fifteen dollars an hour. Next thing you know, a bunch of people applied, and because of that word got out, and then a lot more people supported the business, and they had more business than they can, you know, than they've ever had before, and they're doing just fine and dandy. Um, and their employees, they're happy, service quality's up, I mean, and their rate of turnover is decreased quite a bit, which can also be a pain in the ass for those old businesses, constantly turning over, having to rescreen new people all the time because people they say, this job sucks. I, ain't gonna, I, I mean, I ain't doing it for $8 an hour. It's just too much, too much work. Yeah. Um, I want to do something that's better. So you know, there's all kinds of ways to um, soften the impact, if, if not cancel it out, when we slowly, if and when we slowly ramp up the uh, wage year, like we're a matter of five or so years to from what it is now to 15, even if it takes 10 years, that, that, that's fine by me, as long as it gets put on the path to do that, um, offer incentives and uh, subsidies, I think that would help go a long way to helping at least that angle out, and if they, like I said before, if they thumb their nose at it, hey, that's their choice to do it, so hey, we're offering them a way out and they didn't want to take it, okay. All right, so, Teal. Um... Man, it's hard for me to not like go straight to to uh, criticizing capitalism at every turn. So let me try to readjust my. <laughs> yeah, like I know, find a lot like of I think who are gonna disagree I, with that critique. So yeah, I think you're fine. <laughs> well, I, I think, uh, well, I think it's intentional. Like I think that they didn't raise the minimum wage because they knew it would hurt small businesses. Because the main goal, end goal of capitalists is to own monopolies, right? So they intentionally, in my opinion, like caused this problem of not changing the minimum wage for so many years and now it's not in our zeitgeist um, to change it every year like it was done you know from when it was implemented until 1979 right so like what really what we need to combat the capitalists is you know like stronger labor power more bargaining power for the working class and the way that's going to happen is like workers organizing stronger unions uh worker you know build work our own businesses starting from scratch, you know, like, yeah, maybe the small businesses weren't paying enough and maybe they should deserve to go down, but I don't want them to go down just to like make Amazon be the only game in town. And the only way we can challenge, you know, I prefer like small mom and pop shop, shops, you know, cause the, where, you know, you know, the, the, you know, <laughs> I, I get away from the alienation, get away from uh, fetish customers. I mean, uh, customers, uh, commodity fetishing, uh, fetishizing. So, like, yeah, I think it was intentional, like, like um, before Keynesian economics, like the, like, the business cycle was, I think, almost designed to make it to where, like, yeah, every, we owe the bank our homes, right? So when times get hard, the bank never hurts, right? We start hurting. So what is, ends up happening? The bank ends up owning more of our houses, our business, our properties, right? And we tried to, to fix that uh, in, with the New Deal era with Keynesian economics, trying to like put in a uh, safety net for the working class. And ever since then, the, the owner class has been trying to break down the safety net. And, and, and um, they, they succeeded once they elected, you know, monetarism, like Carter, like allowed some of those monetarist policies to start in 79, which is why he lost. And then they went full bore into that Reaganomics, monetarist economics. And that's what started that eight years of no minimum wage raising. And because Reagan was such a good propagandist nobody seemed to notice nobody seemed to care stealing that from george carlin mm -hmm. and now we're in the situation we're in so yeah okay uh fresh uh yeah so look 15 dollars across the board is probably good um again i would have to we would have to basically have figure out what the cost of living for um would be sustainable and across the country uh, but having that as a floor would probably be good pretty much everywhere um then they you know places like california can figure it out because i think the cost of living there they would require something like 30 dollars um as for you know these ideas that these corporations are going to just uh overthrow people first off there's like a whole lot of nonsense to that um this idea that they're going to automate people um i've all right i'm a little bit younger than some of you guys um as far as i can remember i remember hearing mcdonald's is going to uh to um automate its people since i was probably about eight i remember hearing this uh, this argument um if they didn't do it during the pandemic they're not going to do it because you raised the the uh the cost of minimum wage this other argument that oh if you raise the minimum wage the cost of good is going to explode that doesn't uh hold across actual other countries that higher, have higher minimum wages and their their goods are comparable or uh less expensive than us 
um the uh this idea that these the other thing is um a perfect example of corporations um keeping the the wage down artificially was bessemer so when they were attempting to unionize amazon's argument was you don't need a union we already pay you 15 dollars uh, an hour however if you looked at comparable warehouses in the area that were unionized they were averaging 19 dollars an hour so having that union also helped raise their wages so it's not like this is uh this is new. Obviously, they're going to, and then they lost that court case. That they're they're um, they're going to. I think it's a redo for that unionization. Yeah, um, they're trying it again, right? Because yeah. Amazon was was doing this, and the problem was, uh, like uh, New Social Sarah said, is some of these politicians are just purposely in the way. Joe Manchin, in particular, it is especially egregious because he has. Like on every li- every pretty much every aspect except for voting rights, if you look into Joe Manchin's uh, finances, he has ties to it. He owns a whole bunch of businesses in West Virginia, a whole lot of hotels and stuff that um, pay their workers something like eight to ten cents above whatever their minimum wage is, so they get paid like between like eight and twelve dollars an hour. Um, so that would I- impact his finances if those people made more money. Uh, what, what was the last point I had? Um, I gotta start writing these down. I'm sorry. There's we, we got a lot <laughs> no of uh, there's, there's so much good. in depth with this. There's so much uh, long winded. Yeah, I, um, I, I will remember it uh, later. I'm gonna open up yep. a notepad. Yeah. Well, if, 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 anyone, anyway. yep. if, if right. you remember, just 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 stop me, or if like somebody else is made, just wait until they're done. Just let me know. Um, all right, Carl, what you got? Uh, I mean, there's not much I have to add after all that, but um, I'm just gonna uh, chime in. I say I think you know, New Socialist Era probably touched on something when it comes to mom and pop shops that you know maybe we in the interim do need some sort of of credit uh, that they can apply for um, you know obviously like Tio I'd rather you know shop at a, a local store than one of these corporate giants and I don't want to see the uh, upward transfer of wealth that we've seen throughout the pandemic just perpetuate itself into eternity um, now that being said though uh, m- you know the majority of minimum wage workers are employed by these these mega corporations um, so the majority of people who would be affected would be uh, these employees. Um, I, I personally know a lot of uh, small businesses, a lot of mom and pop shops, who pay their workers well above the minimum wage, uh, who you know, uh, who do just fine uh, because they have a greater relationship with their workers. They incentivize better production, and uh, they understand that you know a good uh, environment actually attracts more people to your business, and that you end up generally being more successful. Um, that as well as the fact that, um, you know, you're also providing the general economy with more, uh, disposable income. And so businesses should also see a boost in that, uh, respect. So yeah, that's about all I had to add to, to this, uh, this specific topic there. No, I, I'm in full agreement. I mean, that, that's just a good work environment. Like I'm a firm believer that if you take care of the workers, employees, whatnot, they're going to take good care of you. And yep. I, I, and that's going to be part of my final thoughts. So, so let's go ahead and go on to uh, the next question. So um, we'll start with Tio this time. Does raising the minimum wage increase more economy activity, or do you think it would cause more employers to lay off employers, uh, employees just to make ends meet? Let's say, for example, after the last administration gave uh, uh, cut taxes, right, for major corporations like AT&T, they said, well, guess what we're going to do? We're going to raise the wage for our workers. But guess what they do? They actually ended up cutting 20% of their workforce across their entire corporation to make ends meet. Now, do you think that, like, raising the minimum wage is going to benefit the workers, or is it just going to give them an excuse to cut some people off completely just to make things balance out? I mean, what do you think about that? Well, this is why I'm an anarchist, because they do have that economic power to screw us all over, right? So they will raise their prices. They will, you know, find ways to, that's capitalism, right? The way a capitalist is successful is he, you know, exploits either his customers, his his employees, or his environment that, you know, getting rid of waste cheaply, whatever. And that's how the system is designed for them to get ahead, right? Because the competition they have. You know, if, if they uh, pay more than their workers, if they get away, if they pay their workers too much, then they're going to lose, right? Because somebody else is going to outcompete them. Mm-hmm. So, like, without strong communities and strong labor unions to like combat them, like to, to stand up to them and say, no, this is this is not good. Like, but the reason it's the reason it's so hard is wage slavery, right? Everybody spends, you know, all day, mother and father, eight hours plus a day, 
plus the commute, like they don't have time to look around and see how, hey, we really should get together as a community and say, hey, it's not okay for you to raise, you know, keep your income. See, they never lose and they will never lose, right? Because they make the rules. Because more economic power equals more political power. So yeah, it, you, in some of those graphs too, I showed how inflation uh, compared to where the minimum wage dollar bought and when the minimum wage dollar uh, was worth the most during inflation, it was during the 50s and 60s, during the, the prime, the Keynesian era, they called it the golden age of American economics. That's when the lower class had more money. Because when the lower class has more money, we spend it, right? It, it, it's, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, it's, you quick, it, it, the move, currency moves quickly, right? The rate of currency. Whereas rich people, they get more money, they just sit on it. It does not have vol Velocity it money. Have velocity, thank you. So, yeah, that's, you know, if we don't organize as people, if we, that's why I love these political shows. And I love that the young people are getting politically engaged because uh, they have wage slavery. That's what it does. It leads to unthinking, unfeeling masses of people that they're so exhausted when they get home from work. All they want to do is watch Netflix and, and forget about their long day. Right. So we need stronger communities because, yeah, we're having all of these social issues, but no social issue will ever change if the people with the most economic power control the politics. The only things that, that get enacted are things that benefit them, and they fix the rules to, to make sure that they continue their gains. Okay. Carl, you're next. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, Teal has it spot on. I'm also an anarchist uh, in my, myself. So, um, you know, obviously a lot of these things that Teal would advocate for, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with him. Um, the only thing that I guess uh, I'm going to add here is, um, you know, a lot of these negative impacts that we see to the economy occur whether or not we raise the minimum wage. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people want to bring in, like, the cost of housing is going to go up. Well, I mean, since the last minimum wage hike, I think it's gone up something like 40% already. Um, so, I, I, I mean, a lot of these impacts that, uh, you know, the owner class wants to attribute to um, minimum wage, uh, I think it's just an excuse that they use um, and, and that, you know, in a lot of cases, they can, they're, 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 they're going to slow trickle this, these things in regardless and that us uh, raising the, the wage or at least making sure that there's some sort of floor is the only way that we have to, to kind of compete against these things, right? So, I mean, they're going to use the government to, to militate and, and as Tio said, you know, more economic power, they have a lot more political power, but we should be using the political power that we do have, um, you know, in order to make sure that we gain every edge that we can because they're going to they're gonna behave the exact same way. Okay. Joe, hit me. Well, what the matters of um, what will this cause? I think if anything, it will cause the economy to sort of balance out or rebalance itself into a new equilibrium and maybe it's kind of like um, throwing a puddle of or swag into a pond it makes a big splash and waves go out but then eventually settles back down and it, to a like I said a new equilibrium of economic activity those people who um, need the money will actually have the money to spend on products and services that they need to get and people at the economic bottom tend to do tend to tend to uh, spend the money almost as soon as they get it uh, for the most part, and you know, if, I, mean, I think if, if, if anything, it will actually be a better situation than we have now. To me, poverty is not so much a character flaw, but it's just a lack of money. If people just had a bit more money, it would cause uh, you know that much more economic growth, which could justify any sort of wage increase. And like I said before, we can look to other countries for examples and see what's going on with them. No, no system is perfect, but their system happens, hasn't collapsed in on themselves. So mm -hmm. I think it's a promising thing that see other countries do this. I mean, Australia yeah. is what at nineteen dollars an hour, so like that's a minimum wage, something like that. And have, you know, as as a, I mean, it's a giant desert. <laughs> they pulled it off. I mean, my God, I mean, what, what, what's our problem? Uh, like I said before, propaganda bullshit, not stop. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just gonna be some. Nothing's ever gonna be smooth, perfectly, you know, smooth sailing. But it's definitely gonna end up. That's the thing. End up being a better situation overall. Sure. All right, fresh. Uh, first, I want to say it's very weird for me to be on a panel, be the most like right-leaning person on a panel. That that is a very weird uh, new thing for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, look. So there was um, I covered this uh, on my my YouTube channel like right when I was starting because I started on YouTube before I went to Twitch. Um, when they were arguing for the fifteen dollars minimum wage in the American Rescue Plan, 
there was i want to say it was a cbo score that said that it would cost something like 1.2 million jobs for the increase um however that uh um that increase wasn't like like an accurate count it didn't count for people who were working double jobs it uh it wouldn't count for people who were going to then start their own businesses and stuff it was it wasn't like a totally accurate number but on the flip side to that it was also going to raise something like seven or eight hundred thousand people <laughs> out of poverty um so this, this i think it was 900 was it was it nine hundred thousand? Okay. yeah yeah it was I, it was less than a million um it would, it would there was a little bit of a gap so ultimately that would have evened itself out um and we we know having uh uh, we know having money in the bottom actually works. Uh, part of the part of the only successful thing we did during the pandemic was our unemployment wages. The the six hundred dollar extra unemployment was ultimately how we gave more money to people. And economists have looked at it and they said this six hundred extra dollars kept the economy from crashing harder than it already did. Um, the other beauty to that was we uh, we've seen that workers are understanding that they have more labor uh, labor power, that more bargaining power. And that's why they're not going back, and that's why companies are forced to raise their wage. Um, the, the the people who are going to get hurt by this is definitely going to be restaurant industries because they're the ones who are so uh, dependent on their tip workers being paid like literal dog shit um, mm-hmm. with, the, with the tip wage. So they're the ones who are going to be hurt the most because they're the ones who um, who basically aren't going to be able to afford people because, because they're complaining like, look, we can't keep our doors open, but we don't want to, uh, we don't want to raise our wages. And even with them... Uh, lowering or removing the 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 unemployment benefits from the the American uh, Rescue Plan, we haven't seen the type of growth that we expected. We have seen growth, but it's not the type. So it's look, it's we've been over this. It's a uh, uh, it's really like a no brainer. It's the more money you give to the bottom, it grows up, and the more money you mm-hmm. give to the top, it just sits there. And you know, maybe at some point in the last fifty years, we'll realize that uh, trickle down economics doesn't work, and then we can stop pretending that it does. <laughs> I got nothing else to add to that, so uh, we'll go ahead. And- if I say, if I say one thing, just one quick thing: the the money thing, right? It's money is like uh, this is a saying I once heard: money is like a pile of manure. If it's a big pile, it just sits there and stinks. If you spread out, it does a whole lot more good. You know, and that same thing with money. It's a nice al- analogy. I never thought about it like that before. So this is why I like <laughs> these panels. You know, you hear something you never really thought about before, right? So, all right. So um, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next question. Okay, so. Would a minimum wage increase help reduce race and gender inequality, or would it reduce the likelihood of upward mobility, meaning would it make it more difficult for people to move up in the economic ladder? And let's go ahead and start with Carl. Okay. Um, I don't really see how it would generally make it harder for people to move up. I think uh, it would undeniably help the wage gap, uh, the racial wage gap, that is, um, seeing as the majority of um, minimum wage workers are people of color. Um, so I think it's, you know, uh, we have historical data to show that that is what happens with minimum wage um, hikes is uh, we do see a decrease in the racial wage gap. Um, yeah, in terms of, of upwards mobility, I mean, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people who currently sit at 15 to $16 an hour who are saying, you know, raising minimum wage up to where I am, you know, that's going to somehow negatively impact me. Well, I mean, I don't see that uh, as we've talked about, you know, there's a lot of bargaining power with labor. And I think that, you know, if you're a teacher and, you know, the McDonald's worker is making 15 bucks an hour or he's making 16 bucks an hour and that's too close to what you're making, uh, you're going to have a lot more power to tell your employer, hey, listen, you should be paying me a lot more or I can just go work at McDonald's, which is a much uh, less stressful job, right? Um, so I think if anything, uh, you know, we're probably going to give people uh, at the bottom a much greater leg up. Um, you know, just uh, I don't I don't like seeing these swabbles between the people who are making, you know, who are currently making, you know, 15 to 20 bucks an hour and the people who are making, what, 70 to 25 when their bosses are making thousands of dollars per hour. So, you know, that that's where our focus should be on, should be on, you know, um, just ensuring that that we kind of push the bottom further up. And as we said, you know, there's a lot of. Uh, really great impacts from doing that that come to our economy. So I think that's undeniable. Okay. Sounds fair. Fresh, hit me. Um, so look, I, you know, I brought this up and then Carl corrected me. We just saw, we just, we touched about it. Uh, 900,000 people would be raised out of poverty from raising the minimum wage. So I don't know how you go to a point where not raising it wouldn't affect people's upward mobility if just raising it helps almost a million people. 
Um, this, as for uh, the racial wealth gap, always having more money will help everything. That's part of the reason there are certain areas that are more crime ridden. That's part of the reason certain areas have more um, have more uh, health issues because their their areas are in uh, near super sites and they can't move. Maybe they could get their kids to better schools, do do things like that. More money is always an effective way. Um, and, and Carl was right. We, we should not be fighting the, the, uh, my, my mom is a teacher. And whenever I have this argument with her, she goes, well, I don't make this money much money. And I was like, well, that's not a reason you shouldn't be kicking down. You should be kicking up. So if the person be- you that, uh, doesn't do a job that is in demand as you is making, um, you know, what you're making, that gives you bargaining power, especially for teachers, like the teachers as it is are incredibly overpaid. We had in the middle of the country, I think it was 20. 2017, 2018, there was like a dozen teacher strikes in like Kentucky and Ohio because all they did was cut their funding. And they're like, listen, we can't do this. And these, there are certain jobs that by necessity have to be done and raising their wage would help raise everyone else. So yeah, obviously giving people more power would help, um, would help uh, solve racial equality, but you also have to, you know, argue it's, you're not arguing with your fellow worker. You're, you're arguing with the, with the, with the owner class. Okay, Joe, what you got? Um, I think everyone else pretty much touched on the points that needed to be touched on. The only thing I would say is, I mean, why why would it hurt over, upward mobility? If if anything, I think it would, you know, strengthen it a little bit, being people more dedicated to their job and more make the job more, uh, you know, more robust. If anything, the quality of the, uh, whatever they're working on makes them more sincere and serious about working whatever they're doing. Uh, it makes them more vested, you know in the job either emotionally or just 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 loving the job or whatever and you know make it to where that person wants to actually be you know go up into the higher echelons of the company instead of just being like hey look these guys ain't paying me nothing i'm just gonna do the bare minimum and just where they can't fire me you know that's the way capitalism works for employee employees is hey listen you pay me just enough to be here i'll do just enough not to get fired i will look at look at it see how fast everybody else is working and i'm gonna go just a little bit slower than that and I will take a lot of bathroom breaks, so um, <laughs> I've done that yeah. before. Sometimes I'll just go into sometimes I'll just go into the bathroom stall. I'll close the door. I won't even pull my pants down. I'll just sit on there for ten minutes and stare at the door like this. Like, <laughs> is this day over with? Yeah, oh my God. I mean, it's that just... never happens in the workplace. <laughs> yeah, I work for oh, a lot, and I and I don't have to uh, pee in a bottle. <laughs> So I'm I just piss on the floor. Fuck them. <laughs> well, that would be in, my <laughs> in the garbage can. Hey, wait, oh. hey, you're just establishing dominance, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's one of the ones. Were you good there? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Tio. Whoa. Okay. It's cart. Okay. I try not to shit on capitalism. Sorry. The just curse. Tio. You uh, but I'm do. going to. I'm going to. I'm going to. Okay. Because I don't like that our culture has this mentality of. of what you call it, getting ahead, or what, what, you, what words did you use again? What was it? Uh, uh, upper growing mobility. Oh, upper, upper mobility. mobility. Yeah. Why is upper mobility a priority? Like, if you have enough food, quality food, uh, uh, quality living establishment, like, I think your priority should then be, like, improve your society, not be selfish and, and, and gather that manure. <laughs> and I don't like that just by default so many Americans that are super propagandized like go to that well how are they going to you know like I was talking to Baz uh, on political revoke discord he's like well you know well you're going to allow Jeff Bezos because I'm cool with like if you make a, a better product like if your labor causes you to make a better commodity you should get paid better like I'm, I got no problem with that I'm a market socialist I love free markets right but mm-hmm. capitalism is this mentality where I need to gather more capital so I can use this capital so I can buy people's labor so I can use their labor to make more capital. And I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. I, I, I'm, I'm a Christian anarchist first. That's how I started my morals. And I'm trying to save souls, right? It's easier for a, a camel to walk through the eye and get a little bit this for a rich man to get to heaven. So, like, I don't want us to money on my mind. I'm mine on my money. I'm money on my I hate the culture. <laughs> I want us to want to improve our society, not make our wallets fat. Have okay. so many Fair questions enough. about your idea. <laughs> yeah, please. Just for another time, all we I have can. discussion. Yeah, yeah. So many questions. So all I can uh, all, I, all I can say is the religious yeah. aspect. If someone, if you try, I, you've probably heard it before. You try to tell someone about the camel thing, go through the ivory needle, and they'll be like, "That's the Old Testament. That doesn't count." Except Genesis <laughs> no, counts. Testament. 
That's the New oh, Testament. Never, no, mm. never mind. I'm dumb. Then. I'm what is it? My only, my, only <laughs> is, you, my only critique to what you said is, are you telling me that I can't have 10 mega yachts? No, I'm for democracy, right? So I'm for, like, anarchists are for democracy. And I'm an anarcho-pacifist, meaning, like, there's this swing of anarchism called militant anarchists, where they want to, like, punch people in the nose or blow up government buildings, right? And to me, like, anarchy is supposed to be against hierarchies, against unjust hierarchies in particular, right? So what makes you the, 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 ex, you know, the, the executioner to want to blow government? To me, that's, like, antithetical to mm-hmm. anarchism, right? Because anarchism wants no one to, to unjustly decide that the, what their decision is matters, right? So, no, I don't want to force anyone anywhere, anytime. If that's more propaganda, red scare bullshit tactics that have mixed up you know stalin red fascist with you know black army like peasant type anarchists like me wait oh, i have another question are you telling me we don't hey, actually have corporate uh, communism because that's what marjorie taylor green said yesterday <laughs> oh god <laughs> never said that name on this stream again <laughs> Dude, I, I, I she this is just wild the people she's gonna announce for president well, no we do have corporate <laughs> socialism oh no no meaning we like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, what people think communism is when it comes to like central planning and all these things with like a strong state presence in the economy. I mean, we have that. Well, that comes mm-hmm. from a lack of just understanding terms and how much they've been used as a uh, fear monger. Yeah, because exactly. I mean, there's a small group of people who control our entire economy, right? So, I mean, people who say, oh, no, I want a free market. Well, I mean, capitalism doesn't uh, like our current state. That's not what we have. Well, that's why you know, socialists anything. argue we're more free. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so. anyone who says anyone who says corporate's cat or corporatism is core communism, like that's when you just say, "What well, anything you know, like is communism." Like mm-hmm. this is ridiculous. Like, com- like you understand what communism? No, I don't know. I heard like uh, it's just, these people are so lost. It's ho- hopeless. It's because they don't understand the terms anymore. So uh, no, don't right. want to. Yeah, and to Joel Red Scare propaganda. They, they intentionally confused. They're like, Orwell warned us. He told us about new speak and double speak, but we didn't listen, right? All right. So we're, we're going to go on to the next question. Sorry, I didn't want to cut you all off. I mean, I, you, guys, <laughs> you guys were having a good conversation, but I just kind of want to move on. So right, there's a lot of all agreement right. here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it, it's, it's fine because, like, you know, even if there's a lot of agreement here, it's good to hear from different perspectives. That way everybody is coming from their own, you know, you know, not wouldn't say school of thought, but just like it, it's based upon everybody else's what they've learned over the years, and they're just kind of bringing it together here. So, all right. Anyway, so um, the next question is: Is does the minimum wage reduce poverty or increase increase poverty? So let's start with Joe. Um, I'd have to see some more data on that. It could go either way theoretically, but theoretically is one thing. Mm-hmm. In reality, when you raise a minimum wage, you do tend to help out people more often than not. So I'd say it helps to reduce it mm-hmm. uh, effectively overall. Are there instances and examples where you can point to outside uh, cases that are not normal? Sure, you could. But overall, I think that minimum wage or the federal minimum wage is one component of an economy. If we're going to have an economy, meaning we'll as well have one that's going to work for everyone, not just big money interest or those who have lots of assets, have it to make sure it works for everyone. So have other programs in place, more robust social safety net state or, or an actual or UBI, sure. that sort of thing uh, for every adult citizen. And I think, for example, UBI should be extended to those who have a, who have a, a current valid green card as well, if they're here. And so to, make the, to produce them being likely being put in a grinding poverty. So I think overall it'd be, it's, 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 an, it's a, a net benefit to those at the economic bottom so they can not have to be so financially hard up all the time. All right, Carl, hit me. Um, okay, well, I think we already referenced a CBO study that mentioned that something like 900,000 people would be lifted out of poverty um, with the, the increase. And, um, you know, as stated, there were, Obviously, some things that weren't accounted for in that study, it was, a, if anything, a bit of a conservative study um, in terms of what, how it would impact the economy, which is generally what we see coming out of the government. Um, so I, I personally think that it's uh, indisputable that it would, you know, generally reduce poverty. Um, like if, if these um, 
I mean, I guess we could see some some job losses, um, but generally speaking, if we look at the history of the minimum wage right, um, like hikes that we've done, I mean, they they tend not to impact um, jobs as much as um, you know the media would like us to think. So um, yeah, that's my that's my take. Tio. Okay, the way we can assert, uh, ascertain this is looking at the other social democracies which have uh, stronger minimum wage laws. And if we, we were living in a more social dem democratic system, like let's look at France, Australia. I like to especially look at France, because France has a history of like workers' movements, right? Mm -hmm. So they have like the best worker, like they get the most weeks off for pregnancy leave, they get the most mandatory vacation days. I think they're like only allowed to work 30 hours a week, I think. Like, you're not allowed to work more than that. Yeah. Um, but if in this American neoliberal hellhole, the, the capitalist class can make it to where more people are in poverty. So they can say, hey, look, see, more people are in poverty now. That's because they've been the rules to fit their agenda. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But, but if you can, if you look at, you know, like those other nations that are stronger social democracies, we can see that it does definitely bring people out of poverty. All right, fresh. Yeah, more money makes... Uh more people come out of poverty. They literally did this with the UBI study. Um, no social area. It's, it's somewhere in California. I can't remember which, uh, Stockton, Stockton. Yeah. I always bring it up and I always forget which city it is. Um, uh, UBI expert. Yes. That, that's why I, I was throwing a team. Um, it was like $500 and it was like a massive boost. That's the same reason that like, first off our, 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 our unemployment numbers are, are bullshit anyway, because some States purposely make their unemployment as difficult as possible to get to because they don't want to have high un unemployment numbers. That's why uh, places like Florida was, uh, was bragging that they'd only had like gave out like 3% of their unemployment benefits, um, during the pandemic, because that's a good thing. Uh, but it look yeah it's this is no brainer. If you give people more money, they're not poor. It, it's like yeah. the, yeah. the 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 single. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure you, you, there's not a. Uh, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who disagrees with that. Statement. Sure, I mean yeah. As Tio said, I mean you know it, it, they might the owner class can make it so that more people are in poverty after the minimum wage hike, but that would generally be, I would consider it independent of the minimum wage, right? Like that's just a reaction to the minimum wage. It's not a, a, a causal effect or anything like that. Yeah, if we raise the minimum wage a couple dollars and then a burger goes from, uh, we'll take the McDonald's dollar, dollar menu, goes from a dollar to $7 for the cheap one, then obviously we're going to know like, okay, well, these companies need to be reined in because they're, they're not doing this in good faith. That's actually one of my next questions here in the future. So we'll, we'll <laughs> talk about that in a second. So, uh, but my next question though, however, okay. So people like Ben Shapiro ben have, made claim, have made claims that if you raise the minimum wage, the inflation rates are going to go up to keep things balanced within the economy. For example, he'll say, if you raise inflation rate, I mean, if you raise the minimum wage for like a local grocery store, next thing you know, that grocery store is going to start charging a gallon of milk. It used to be $2.25. It's now going to be $3.25. A loaf of bread is going to increase by a dollar or whatnot. So, for example, if you start raising the minimum wage in grocery stores or in fast food restaurants, places like that, all of a sudden, the prices are going to start skyrocketing because they just need to be able to make sure that they can actually maintain the uh, – not just supply and demand, to make sure that they can actually make sure they can continue to pay the factories that bring them these products, to make sure they can actually pay their workers this fair wage. Is this true or does this seem kind of like a scare tactic? And you know what? Let's start with Carl this time. Okay. Uh, I 100% think it, it's a scare tactic. Uh, again, we can look at the international system for this. Uh, I think it's somewhere like Denmark. Uh, McDonald's employees are getting paid $22 an hour. They have something like six weeks paid vacation on top of that, a year's maternity leave. Um, you know, the, and, and uh, their Big Mac costs 27 cents more than it does in America. Uh, so I think that, you know, um, if that's what we're talking about, um, in terms of, of price differentials, I think that, you know, the economy should easily eat that cost uh, because the, you know, transition in, you know, a, a minimum wage worker making $22 an hour over seven twenty five, dollars um, you know, obviously it's an, uh, incomparable to the amount of uh, buying power that that's going to change and the amount of uh, influx that that's going to give the economy, right? So, um, yeah, that, that, I guess that's where I'd be coming from on this one. Joe, hit me. All I can say is, 
kind of what Carl said, the price went up nominal, nominally because there's a concept that a lot of these economic writers don't really understand when it comes to business. It's called volume, <laughs> volume of sales per day. Um, and it's not going to have, you know, even if minimum wage goes up, even to $15 an hour, they may have to bump up each item's price, maybe 10, 20, 30 cents at the most. And Denmark or the country you mentioned before, Carl mentioned, uh, got a much better, sweeter deal for their workers overall and doesn't really cost so much more. Uh, it's well worth it. Well, prices go up probably a little bit, but they're not going to be, it's not going to be the new zero. It's not going to be the new cancel. That's not going to be a zero sum game. So it's it, Ben Shilpiro because he's such a show for his big money masters <laughs> and supporters. Um, that's a real shame because he, he can, you know, when, when, the, when, his rhetoric, when his rhetoric is okay, it can be really. Really decent, but he's just playing for the wrong team. But um, you know, I would talk about his height, but I'm not trying to height shame him or say <laughs> or say or say anything like he can do backflips under the bed. Um, but you know, <laughs> it's like it's not going to get that. <laughs> I, sh- I shouldn't do that. I apologize. But no, right, but it's like, right. ben, ben, ben is like volume. I mean, these these what you think they sell three big bags in one day? They sell like five hundred or a thousand a day. I mean, but add this a little bit more on the price, and it, it it would even out that way. I mean, people would then be much more supportive of a business that pays their employees something decent from the, from the get. Uh, so that's, that's the reality. That's why these right wingers need to learn economics, <laughs> especially from me. That's it. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, fresh hit me. Yeah. The, look, we go to the, the, I was looking up, I was about to look up what the, uh, the, the burger cost difference is. Also, uh, when you listen to Ben Shapiro, you have to slow him down so that you can break apart his arguments. Because, <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> uh, because half of the time they're baby brained or they're um, they're uh, uh, their I feel statements, not actual based in fact. But look, like uh, buying power is is going to increase for people. Um, I'm sure some prices will go up also. Um, and it's also not like these people, the people who complain about this, understand what inflation is anyway, because they're arguing that uh, the current inflation that we're dealing with is totally due to the spending during the pandemic, even though the spending mostly took place under Donald Trump. But it's it's Joe Biden's fault. Um, and even though it's, it's almost entirely uh, tied to the individual supply chains that are currently having issues because there's still a global pandemic and things are still locked down in certain areas. So they're having a hard time reaching that supply and demand. So look, if you're going to argue that if you, if you want to have the argument that it's possible that places become more uh, expensive, yeah, it is possible. But you have to look at realistic arguments. You can't just say, um, I think a Big Mac is going to cost $23.5 like some people say instead of two when it's just, you know, the, the data is out there. This is not a... Uh, um, this is this is not like where we're sitting. This is not the 1980s where you have to listen to all your information on the television and a newspaper. There's enough data mm-hmm. out there for us to know that this is just. Yep. Deal. All right, man. To me, like they always say, hey, the prices might go up. But see, that's because we're not punching up. There's not enough socialists, anarchists, uh, trade unionists, labor unions. Because, like, what should happen, the CEO pay should come down before prices come up in a fair system. But the way they want to, to make those excuses, like, yeah, the number is going to go up on our products because we can't possibly give up some of our 15 yachts. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So, my next question, okay. So, I don't know if you all caught this one, but I actually – Watch the entire Vosh versus Charlie Kirk. Dude, debate. I did that on stream. I enjoyed the hell yeah. out of it. I, so Vosh is part that, of why I do this. So that was actually a pretty good debate. And I definitely say that Vosh won that debate like hands down. It wasn't even close. So, but anyway, Tim Poole actually brought up how John Schneider of Papa John's was raising the ways raising the wages for his workers. And apparently this isn't confirmed, but he had raised the wages for his workers to be $35 an hour. But Tim Pool claims that they actually raised the price of pizza to go up at Papa John's. Is this just the cost of raising wages for your workers? Or do you think John Schneider is just, you know, trying to play a game? Do you think he's just trying to skate by? He's like, let me just raise the prices on my pizzas. And, you know, because because I'm trying to take care of my workers, more people are going to come by and buy my product. I mean, what do you guys think? And we'll start with Teal this time. Well, same thing I just said. Wait, can right? I ask a why, clarifying why? question real quick? Yes, sir. John, was John Snyder the 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 Papa John's one that were crazy and they fired him for saying the N word? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the, the same sweaty one. dude. But anyway, please go, <laughs> say, go ahead and Teal. 
<laughs> well, since trickle down economics, right, that got into our mindset, that got into our zeitgeist, that we really believe that the people, the job creators, deserve mm -hmm. all of that, that money that they made, that they, they shouldn't be, you know, like, let's compare. That's why I love, let, let's look at worker cooperatives, so me and Carla to, to notice, right? Compare the CEO pay in a worker cooperative compared to the average worker, and then let's look at a super neoliberal USA, yay capitalism, you know, comparison between their CEO pay and the normal employee pay. Mm -hmm. So, like, if CEO pay was, like, in a place where it was, like, yeah, they still, even in uh, even at Madrigan, they get paid, what is it, 50 times more? Or, <laughs> no, I forget the numbers. And I used to know the numbers, so I had to look. But, but, you know, it's, like, thousands of times. CEOs make thousands of times what their re regular employees make. It's ridiculous. That's the thing that society needs to get upset about, right? Mm -hmm. Like, the people need to go, hey, this is not okay for you to own five yachts while this city has so many homeless people. Like, it makes no sense to me why people aren't angry about stuff like that. But eh, everybody has different values, I guess. Joe, hit me. Joe. All right. The thing is, uh, quick, quick, what was the, t what was the question real quick again? Uh, basically talking about, like, how John Snyder raised the uh, – <laughs> uh, he uh, raised the wages $35 an hour for his employees, but then he says that uh, – but then Tim Pool claimed that how – the price of pizza has just gone up on Papa Murphy's. I mean, Papa John's. I mean, I don't know. I don't buy from Papa John's. So, uh, but do you um, think like, uh, you think this is like, this is just the price of pizza or is this just, is the cost of raising wages uh, for your workers? Is it worth it really? I, I think it's in the end is worth it, at least for good PR. I think a lot of capitalists um, enjoy good PR because they know, you know, got a good um, message out about their business or good news about the business, you know, good thing, then people are going to be more likely to support them than mm -hmm. say someone else, especially if they're raised, really raising their wage of 35 an hour for, I'd have to look into that because I'm like, is he doing it for every single employee, employee, like even the drivers or? That's the claim, but I haven't, I have not been able to find anything to back that up really. I just bought but, it because Tim Pool brought it up during his debate, so. <laughs> yeah, but if it's true, then it's good on him that he's doing that. Um, but in the end, if prices go up, something like that, hundred dollars a pizza. I, mean, I don't want to do that, but um, I mean, that better, I, I, I mean, be, a, that better be a good pizza. <laughs> I, mean, I like your, I like his, I like his pizzas, and I like those little, uh, those little pepper thing, hot painted pepper things come with those little. Um, sometimes they're a bit too hot, but yeah, the garlic butter is the bomb. I love their garlic butter. Yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's decent, pretty decent enough pizza. I mean, the decent enough price, but yeah, I mean, raises to thirty five an hour, I think. It's going to garner him a lot of support. And I, I, yeah, is it a game? Sure, it's always a game. Capitalism is a game. Or being a capitalist is a game, trying to garner as much market share as you can, any yeah. way you can. If, if, you, if you can do that through um, good word of mouth, um, you know, spreading of the, what you're trying to do to the people and to get more business that way, that's, of course, part of the game. Um, but if it's, if it's the game being played good or de more decently, I'm all for it. Um, but, just, but, of course, I'm never going to trust someone like him. He's just... Literally too slimy. He sweats all over the place. Carl. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's probably some sort of scheme that he's running, right? Like, I mean, one, he can get a lot of good PR, like that, like was mentioned. And uh, two, I mean, he can, um, you know, undercut the viability of, you know, raising the minimum wage by saying, oh, look, my prices just happened to go up when I did this. Um, so I think he has like some sort of uh, like a, a, of, of underlying um, plan there as well. But like uh, I mean, I, I think it's probably great for his workers that they're they're being paid that much. Um, I can't imagine if the prices go that high that people are still going to be buying his pizza um, in this market, even though even with the good PR that you know you're paying your workers sufficiently. Um, and I think that you know the price hike that is likely to have been seen is is likely to have been. Uh, Simply manufactured by by this uh, the this owner um, in order to again just undercut the uh, the theory that we we can raise the minimum wage without seeing these huge increases in prices. So. Well, to be fair, I think like John, uh, no, no, John, uh, Peyton Manning did better as far as a PR campaign for Papa John's because it says every time I score a touchdown or every time the Broncos win a game, I put this promotion code and you'll get a free pizza. That dude was killing it for Papa John's, honestly. So, but all right, all right sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Fresh. Um, look, so uh, just just a quick Google search doesn't seem to uh, say that that is uh, an accurate way of what they get paid. 
Um, mm-hmm. So I, I obviously, yeah. you know, I just did it while we we're having this conversation. So whether this is a full search or not, but the other thing is, um, there's two separate ways to look at this. So there's, uh, I don't know how many guys know Dan Price. I don't know what exactly he does, but my understanding of his company is yep. he pays them like seventy thousand dollars a year, and he cut his yeah. own wages during the pandemic so that his people didn't like. He's and he's generally looked on pretty favorably because of how he yep. treats his workers. On the other hand, we have this story about uh, Chipotle. So Chipotle. Um, there was a story a couple months ago that they were going to raise their prices like 4%. And the reason they said that was because we have to raise it in order to um, to pay for giving our workers a fair living wage. But then it turned out that it had to do with um, with with CEO uh, pay. Like if they had just not given their CEOs the bonus, they could have covered like the entirety of their worker ra- uh, raises without doing anything to their prices. It had nothing to do with the, the worker wages. It was like the CEO stuff. And I think they also had some supply chain issues. So it's, look, it's the ultimate question. And this is what I'm, I'm, I'm talking with my chat about is we do know that like, we can all agree um, prices are going to go up to some extent. If you raise them, the question is how much are you going to raise them? If you are um, uh, let's say Burger King versus McDonald's, if the Burger King, raises their prices like 1,500%, and McDonald's only raises it like 7%, people are going to go to McDonald's more often than they are to Burger King. So, like, it's um, by that the, the market itself should actually kind of stabilize how much they're going to try to screw people. So they, we're not going to end up with these absorbent um, uh, prices that, that are just, like, out of nowhere that would just wipe out whatever gains you make by having a, a, a living wage. Like, in the, in it... I mean, this is obviously it is possible that because our capitalist system is not like tr- I mean, it well, is true capital, running capitalism, um, it would wouldn't be able to handle the shock of that. It's possible it might do that, but in theory, it should not um, be more than the gains because that wouldn't make sense for the buying power that these people would have. Okay. Um. All right. These are all really good arguments, and I appreciate everybody. So, okay. So, my next question, okay. So, I've got about five more questions to go, okay. So, this is going to be pandemic related. So, please don't get triggered, all of the people out there that might actually disagree with this, okay. So, COVID did a huge number on the workforce, and some people were unable and still are unable to go back to work right now, okay. Do you think that maybe it's because some people choose not to go back to work? Or are there contributing factors that could cause someone to not be able to go back into the workforce? So let's go ahead and start with uh, Joe. This idea that people don't want to go back in the workforce um, during COVID is very understandable, especially if they're being, uh, their benefits are being paid out pretty close to what they were making before. I mean, why would you want to go out and risk yourself to get sick, even if you're vaccinated during the pandemic? I mean, really... They should be giving everyone like at least $1,000 a month U- emergency UBI right now, but they won't even do that. Just gave us several measly checks and that was it. They told us, told us to screw off. Um, if they really want to keep workers have money to where the economy can keep going, they can do that. But the idea that people are just, oh, they're just lazy because they're living large on $300 or whatever a week is beyond ridiculous. I mean, 300 that ain't shit. I mean, I'm sure you're sure that most people are doing some side hustles uh, to make a little bit more money on top of that just to get what they need. $300 a month ain't shit, it really isn't. But that speaks to what um, a, lot of these, a lot of these places are paying their people, um, 300 bucks, 400 bucks a week. And it's just like maybe it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that would be considered damn decent wage or damn decent pay per week. But it's just stagnating. Like, oh, you, why, should, why, why, should, why should they go out and then during a the pandemic risk getting – catching COVID or some weird variant of it and, and get paid basically the same thing. Just let, it, just let it ride out. And quite frankly, Americans are so overworked. I don't blame them. If all of a sudden we did do a UBI, people just have the roads at bottom largely just quit. Um, I wouldn't blame them for taking a long, a year, couple, few, few years off as a break because people just been overworked way too much in this country, especially those at the economic bottom taking advantage of their labor and their desperate situation. And eventually, it is going to equalize out. Um, this has been shown in the you know pay test balance of UBI, but I think that my example is kind of an extreme example. I don't think it's going to happen like that. But yeah, um, people, people like that. But yeah, yeah, it's it'll like like why 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 should I mean I wouldn't would you <laughs> probably not if my options were limited. I mean I wouldn't. But three hundred bucks is that ain't shit per week. It, people people talk oh that's too generous. Like yeah you're a stingy motherfucker. But um. <laughs> Yeah, but that's pretty much yeah, that's pretty much my point. Is give people money, but they won't. Teal. 
There's this great book by David Graeber, um, anthropologist anarchist that passed away recently called Bullshit Jobs. Yep. And where, where he talks about so many people like realize their job is just bullshit, right? Like, like the company could run fine without their job. They just like basically give in busy work, right? So what I don't know, like my grandpa used to talk to me about this, this is why I'm so left. Like he used to say, we fought labor to, to only have to work 40 hours a week, right? And that was what, 1930? And we're still working 40 hours a week. Why? It's because our mindset thinks you have to work 40 hours a week. Like, so what a lot of people I think are starting to realize is that this nuclear family that they propaganda us into believe is not the best, not most beneficial. It's more beneficial to have multi-generations in a household. That way you do have that extra security of not having to, you know, that, that saves on, on sharing uh, utilities, uh, uh, makes your rent costs come down, right? So the pandemic, or a lot of people that didn't, that weren't receiving that uh, bonus to unemployment, like they had nothing else, right? So they had to go either live with family, move to a, a cheaper location. Um, like, and, and now in the pandemic also helped us realize that, like, yeah, we don't need to be sitting in rush hour traffic, spend all this money on this long commute, right? So you can almost break even because sometimes your job is actually costing you, you know, a commute, stress, medical bills from stress. Like, you, you almost barely break even, right? And if you're lucky, you break a little more than even. A lot of people are starting to realize because they've had this extra time to invest in politics. This is why we're seeing so many more politically invested young people and, and adults too. Like it's caused them to, to reevaluate their lives. Like why am I spending all this time at a job I hate, being underpaid for a boss who doesn't appreciate me for barely getting ahead at all? Like, and this is something I try to like, even, like try to get the, the fascists the, like the people that want the strong families. So I'm a Christian anarchist, even though really I'm more of a secretist, but I, I come to Christianity still to try to get them to understand that this is what's hurting our family values. It's like, yeah, we're both parents have to work 40 plus hours a week for, uh, it makes no sense, right? But we don't fight for 20 hours a week, 20 hours. We're not picketing the streets like the socialists and communists did, you know, before the New Deal era that, that you know, is that political pressure from the left, from the Labour Party, from the two socialist parties, from the Communist Party, that got the Democrats to finally give us concessions, right? But they got rid of the left. There's no, there hasn't, the Red Scare took away the left in America until Bernie Sanders kind of brought it back some, right? But we need that counterbalance to, to get us to, see, hey, why are we, why is that an average work week? Because in France, like I said, in France, it's like they're not allowed to work more than 30 hours a week. Like they're not allowed to work overtime. Like that's their culture, right? Their culture is in, in like Spanish culture. They take siestas, man. Like they close everything down afternoon. And, you know, they only work in the morning. And like the, the British used to be freaked out because they were trying to get like the Spanish to work the plantations the way mm -hmm. the, the English did. And, and that's not our culture, man. But like, why, why are we working so hard? We work hard, harder than the Japanese and they're the second hardest working society in their culture, right? So like, it makes no sense to me. And like me, as somebody who went blind, right, and I got a disability check, and that little disability check was barely enough for me to make minimum, right? But what it did, it freed me to what? Pursue my art and to, to create my own businesses, to, to, to try to improve my society. I started, like, uh, joining organizations to help feed the homeless. I started, you know, doing, getting more involved politically, like going to city council meetings and, you know, having discussions with the mayor and stuff. So it freed me up to try to improve society, not spend my whole day being in a, in a rat wheel. So, you know, that's, that's it. I think we need to, we need to take this opportunity that Corona gave us to like re-educate the working class to not, to no longer be exploited. People are starting to get it and they don't want to be exploited anymore. And that's where we're pushing worker owned corporations, co-ops, the internet has made it to where people can make a living streaming. That's why a lot of people started streaming. You know what I'm saying? Those new things are going to start happening, right? We'll, so yeah, maybe automation is going to come, and they like to fear monger with that. Well, automation you know what? Is the maybe next automation. Topic. Uh, automation okay. is the next topic. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll save it. I'll save yeah. it. Ooh. All right, sorry guys. Yeah, no worries. It's just like automation is going to come up. So all right, fresh. What you got? Mm -hmm. Um, I, I I'm sorry. There's a lot going on. Um, the the question was, uh, 
uh, how has the pandemic influenced uh, or or Americans lazy or, because of the pandemic, right? Yeah, yeah well, like, it, okay, so the labor uh, is it because the labor shortage? Are not, is, is it because people are choosing not to go back to work, or are there contributing factors as to why people are not coming back to work? Okay, uh, first. This is this is this is a right wing talking point, and as uh, for right wingers, it is very capable of having two conflicting thoughts simultaneously. They have to juggle about ten of them, depending on which if we're counting on all these different issues. Because the simultaneous thought is the American people are the hardest working people, and they they love to work more than anything else, and they're also lazy bums who want to just suck off the government's teeth. Um, those <laughs> two ideas don't conflict. Uh, they, 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 they don't, you can't have them simultaneously if you have a, a seven brain smells, se- brain cells, um, and your brain is <laughs> brain super smells. Um, uh, yeah, so there's, there's that, um, as for, uh, what Tia was saying, uh, when it comes to like workers right and stuff, uh, none of this stuff would happen without people like us whining on the left for better workers. That's why we don't have children, uh, child labor laws, which is generally why I believe libertarians are insane. Um, like the actual party, not the individuals, because they're 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 they're, they're like national parties out of their minds. Um, Them too. Yeah, well, whatever. They're they're all crazy. Um, uh, <laughs> so look, the the pandemic showed us a lot. Um, like he like Tio was saying about you know uh, working cities. We're gonna the fundamental way that we built cities. What might change because of this? Because corporations realize, hey, I don't need to 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 be to hire a office building in fucking New York and pay. You know, unless you're in a uh, uh, WeWorks, and pay like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars a square foot. Um, when I can have uh, Jim, Bob, and Mary uh, work from home, and they get everything done as productively, so that saves costs. So that could change how cities. Like, there's so much that's changing because of the pandemic, and just the like, like the worker revolution that could happen is not because of people, um, you know, rioting on the streets or, uh, or this, this, this. Marxian idea of, of, of a revolution. It happened due to the collapse of the economy due to a pandemic. And now that the workers have an idea of you know, how powerful that they can be. Because look, if your job was paying you so little that um, minimum, uh, unemployment is something like 50 to 75% of your wage plus $300, and you were making more money on that, and then they offered you to come back, and you're like, you don't, you don't have the options. Like, why would I do this backbreaking work when I can make infinite, I can make more money well, and go look for somewhere else. Like you're forcing the bottom, the, the people to raise wages. And that's why I think, especially restaurants, because they're, they're so uh, determined to have their people work on, um, on minimum wages and that it would, they're going to be forced, especially for the, 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 like the fact that we have a, uh, a tip wage that is so low, is just, just mind blowing. Like every time I think about it, it just makes no sense. And then there's, um, Everything about COVID was like the best thing that came out of COVID uh, is just like the or- reorganizing of the economy. That we're, um, it just you know the the ability for workers to have more power, the the increased wages that is going because like the market is responding. Companies are raising their wages; they have to. Uh, companies mm-hmm. are going to shift to how their businesses work. They're going to go more online. They're going to you know be a little bit more family friendly because they've been profitable. It's not like mm-hmm. like the market didn't like it collapsed in the beginning but it's still at all-time highs now so it's not like we we broke capital they can understand that oh maybe we don't have to break the the workers to the level that they were it's just look again all, go, rolling back to the question um yeah americans aren't lazy we just paid like shit and we realized that we didn't have to do that anymore yep fair enough all right carl hit me um yeah i mean i think that that's uh, spot on. I think that basically uh, people realized with this, you know, being freed up, uh, you know, somewhat by the pandemic, even though, um, you know, as mentioned with unemployment, they were making, you know, some pretty substandard wages. Uh, as we've discussed, they were already making substandard wages. So they're thinking, well, why would I return to a job that's going to pay me, you know, the same or less than what I'm uh, currently being given? Um in order to basically be, you know, treated like a slave. Um, I know here in Canada, for example, uh, we were given $2,000 a month um, if you were laid off from your job due to the pandemic. And um, many, many people I know started their own ventures using that money. Many people I know, uh, you know, obviously uh, saved that money, invested it so that they could then, 
use that as a, a resource um, by which they wouldn't have to return to their job and they could find something better for themselves. Uh, I think that's a good thing. I think that that's going to, again, put pressure on these mega corporations to do more to attract labor. And this is just a great way that we have to have gained power for the, the labor force. And I think that, um, you know, a lot of these jobs, the people being being told that they are essential workers, I think that that was a, a major realization for a lot of people that, uh, you know, now they, they understand that, well, wait a minute, like you're calling me essential, but you're going to pay me the bare minimum. You know, that, that those two things don't really um, go together, right? Like if, if you're essential, I mean, theoretically, the company should be giving you, you know, a, a pretty, pretty good wage, right? Better wage, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, what I'm understanding is, uh, you know, a lot of these strikes have, have popped up along, uh, you know, all across the country. Um, and, and I think that, that that's great. And I think that, that we're just going to see that bolster the labor market. And um, one last thing I want to add in, I think I, I read about a, a general strike US-wide on October 15th. So I think that if anybody wants to organize their workplace to take part in that, that, the, that that's a worthwhile effort. I think general strikes are a good way for us to, to put some, some great pressure on, on the workforce all at once. Uh, so as many, as many enterprises as we can get going on this, that's great. And, you know, if you're a shopper, if, you're, if, you, don't, if you can't organize a business uh, or you're your fellow employees to kind of join you in the strike, then, then do a, a boycott and, and don't shop on, on that day as well. Um, you know, we should, we should make them hurt the way that they, they often do to us. So uh, that, that's my last thought there. Well, wait, no, can I, I add something too? This, is, this might be a little sure, bit real, real, real quick, you go ahead. Um, uh, the other thing is we, the, the beauty of what he brought up um, about the essential workers is we, we saw how poor a lot of their conditions are. Um, I think Tyson is like the perfect example. Um, we saw like, like in the middle of pand the pandemic, the Tyson uh, flush where they all, they like, they were getting COVID like every day. They had like hundreds and hundreds of cases because of how bad their working conditions are. So by having us look at the through a health crisis, we can understand where the the systems break down, and they have they're gonna have to be forced to make changes because it's it's you know uh, people are gonna be hopefully more health conscious or those who aren't are gonna be dead, um, and it's going to help boost the economy. So maybe the the Tyson workers are going to be packed so close. Maybe somebody working in a service industry isn't going to have to come to work with the flu because you pay them so little that they can't go to the doctor. Fair enough. All right. So here's the deal. Okay. I got five more questions before we go into final thoughts. Okay. So I want to limit all these answers to about three minutes and I'll be keeping time. Okay. I'll let you know when you're about 30 seconds out. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. It's just like, you know, sorry. I'm no, no, it's okay. No, I'm I mean, long-winded. I'm long-winded. No, 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 no. It, This is not <laughs> hit against to the point. No, it, it's not hit against anybody. It's just, you know, I just want, you know, a quicker answers, okay? So here's the next question, okay? So this is going to be kind of long-winded before I actually get to the question, but just to make sure everybody understands where I'm coming from, okay? So there's been a lot of concern, okay, about automation, okay? We heard about this in one of the last debates last night on Politically Provoked between Disney and Mio, okay? It was talking about automation, there's about a, been a big concern about automation taking over the workforce as a means of replacing low-skilled workers. Now, while this opens up a market for people to become technicians and engineers to create this fantastic product known as automation, it also actually does take away from the human interaction that some people actually need to survive in this world. Human interaction is essential to increase your job skills and your people skills which these are traits I truly do think that are necessary. However, automation means you can uh, produce more products and services, and in some cases, you can actually produce them more efficiently. Should there be a balance between automation and manual labor force, or should there be certain jobs that are strictly automation and strictly jobs that require manual labor, or is there a solution that you might think that's better about that? So, Tio, you start first. Okay, from the beginning of civilization, and I, I'm not saying humanity, civilization, it was labor-saving devices, right? So used to 10 people had to fish to feed the village, then they found a better way to fish, like they invented a net, and one person was able to do the work of 10, right? So those other nine people got to become prophets, uh, medicine men, artists, musicians, right? And the same thing, picking back on the 40-hour week thing, knock us back down to 20 hours 20 hours a week is enough to, to feed your whole family. And then more artists will appear. More people will make YouTube videos. Like, we'll have more leisure time, so we'll need more 
uh, leisure to fill our time, right? So that will cause a demand for more artists. And you know, I, I love a society with more artists. So that's it. You know, labor-saving devices at the beginning of civilization. So why are they afraid of them now? You know. All right, Joe. Automation can be a good thing or a bad thing as long as people or consumers are kept in the loop economically through UBI, and that's on top of current social programs. Um, I'm, I like to see a left-wing implementation of universal basic income on top of the existing programs. It may sound expensive, and it is, but it's still a lot cheaper compared to letting poverty exist the way it does. So if ever those things are going to be automated, the jobs are going to be automated away. I mean, look at your supermarket. They've got, got those self-checkout lanes. Those are starting to become more and more of a thing. And just a few years ago, it seemed to be like a little curiosity. But automation, like I said, it, it's, it's, just a, it's a tool like any other. It can be used or misused. And as long as other considerations are taken into um, taken into account, um, such as keeping people in the financial loop, not just automating people's jobs out of existence and then telling the people to go to hell. Um, you know, that, 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 that to me it can be the bad way, but the good one is universal basic income on top of current social programs would help to alleviate that, um, to, at least to a good, a good degree. But as far as like some, some jobs being uh, preferably automated or people-based, I think that's just going to come down to some jobs are just very hard to automate, very nuanced, very um, very difficult for a machine to to learn that unless you're like like a straight up Android, like like a data on Star Trek is able to do like to that level of sophistication. But if someone like him exists, then I'm pretty sure he can be put to a much more effective use in other areas. Uh, I'm not just going, would you like more fries with that? Um, you know, it's... Yeah, it's, it's, it's how we do it, and as long as we don't cut, don't cut people out of the economic loop, I think it can be actually end up being a very good thing compared to what we're doing now. Okay. That's it. All right. Uh, Carl, hit me. Um, yeah, so I think automation is something that, you know, we should definitely uh, move forward with, but obviously uh, I think that there could be a lot of issues with the labor market there. Um, like what I would say is actually this is kind of where I would bring in, I guess, one of my critiques of, of capitalism is that, you know, it, it, the best way we can kind of control the negative impacts of automation is by ensuring that, um, you know, it's not just the shareholders who own these, these, uh, these products, but that the, you know, they're owned by, by every stakeholder, um, you know, uh, customers, people in the community here, um, so that we can reap those fruits um, you know, regardless, like, uh, for example, like, obviously, <laughs> you know, the owner class is going to want to keep their prices the same. Um, but I think that, you know, if you're, if you're having to hire one person, um, versus, you know, uh, you know, hundreds, um, that you're, you're going to be saving a lot of, you're going to be saving a lot there. Um, and that those savings should be passed along to the community. Uh, if, if the bread factory can make you know, all the bread in a day with one guy over there, then, you know, maybe we, uh, you know, maybe the people should be getting free bread by that point. Um, you know, these are things that the people are going to have to fight for. Um, so I think that automation, great thing, um, depends on how f far we go into the future as well, where this, you know, can get even more problematic as the streamers. We know that, you know, the, you know, there's probably going to be an impact even to our services that we offer, um, even artistic services, Will eventually be affected by these by these automated processes. Um, so I think that it's important to understand, uh, yeah, just who owns these these advancements, and I think it should be the community that owns these advancements rather than you know specific uh, individuals with a lot of capital. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead and hit me, new fresh. Uh, all right. Um, look, I knew we were going to get UBI when that question came up, but it's it's. The thing, uh, automation's coming. It's it's coming. Uh, whether whether we raise the minimum wage or not, the question is how are we going to solve it? Um, UBI is ultimately going to have to happen because you know people who aren't um, or aren't as educated aren't going to be able to you know fix the robots or fix whatever the the, the robot overlords or the the AI programs. So not everyone's going to be able to code. Um, you know those people deserve to live too. We can't just turn them into mulch and have soil and green. Um, we. It, it's coming. Like, we just have to, you know, we have enough understanding that it's going to happen. We can start to see where the effects of it is. Um, automate, like uh, Tio said, automations happen in, in the, all the time. Uh, like, a really good example of this was the cotton gin. Originally, they thought, you know, maybe it would um, reduce the need for slaves, and then ultimately it backfired because they realized they had more profit from it. So, 
it's it's coming the question is how do we deal with the the inevitable fallout and the fallout cannot be well sucks to be you guys now you're you're shit out of luck it's we need to build the systems to catch them now before the uh um before they inevitably fall and that's why it's called the safety deck all right fantastic all right so those are all good uh questions okay so the next question okay so this is an interesting one all right should all workforces be allowed to unionize to ensure workers get fair wages, health insurance, and benefits, regardless if it's a low-skilled wage job or a high-skilled wage job. Carl, you start. Uh, yes, 100%. Uh, every workplace should should be uh, free to unionize, and I think that we should have some sort of system to crush um, anti-labor efforts. Um, here in Canada, we, we do have, I think, probably a more robust system than, than you guys have. We do have some closed shops, um, we have, uh, you know, that are kind of mandated by the, by the government. Um, I, I don't know, you know, how far I want to go with, with using the state to do this, but, um, I do think that it's great that, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe we, we dis, uh, disincentivize these employers from, from doing what we've seen them do, which is, you know, put up poster boards telling people what the problems are with unionizing and, you know, all these scare tactics that they'll use against their their um, employees where, you know, you'll fear for your job. Uh, I think obviously it's going to, there's going to be some issues when it comes to, you know, obviously if your employer wants to fire you, he'll find a reason. So if you're trying to unionize and the word comes out, regardless of the labor, um, like saving measures that we might want to put into into place, these employers are probably going to have some sort of power over us. Um, but yeah, I think uh, all in all, 100%, we should, we should all be uh, building these, these unions or trade networks or however you want to put it. All right. Uh, Fresh, go ahead. Uh, well, yes, they, they should be able to, to bargain <laughs> it. Um, I mean, obviously, there's the caveat that not all unions are, are good or effective. Um, you know, the, the police union comes to mind. Um, but yeah, everyone should be able to bargain for a union. It, it's freedom. Um, where America lets the land of the free, let's uh, let's have more freedom. Okay, fair enough. Teal. We live in the United States. Uniting should be one of our main cultural um, backbones. You know, like uh, so. Yes, I love union. Like me personally, I have a union of of, of my friends that are uh, musicians, and we're all like in a co-op together. And then we're also all in the musicians union bigger union trade union yes as many unions as possible to counterbalance the negative aspects of unions right separation of powers power corrupts so we have answers to all these you know corruption and union problems the same you know let's look at the american government system you know we want we don't want too strong a, a federal government so we have state governments to counterbalance so that's mm -hmm. that's my personal experience how we would balance the corrupt potential corruption that I will uh, yes. do a thank you to all the um, yes. the yes. Yes. Uh, um, all the, to the followers and the oh, the subscriptions say, after uh, this. Uh, so please stay around if you follow or subscribe, and I'll shoot yeah. the thank out to you after this. To me, that's a must. But besides that, I think we should also have what's called sectoral bargaining, sectoral unions, to help to glue together all the various unions together to form um, or to form up a much more solidarity type of. Uh, arrangement among the workers not just broken up unions but there was actual real organization from bottom up on the regional even national level um i think that would be a real good way to um to ensure the longevity and the effectiveness of the unions to where hopefully there's enough sunlight being shown on these unions and how they're running to keep them from being corrupted by uh influences of management and that sort of thing but yeah i mean it's no brainer to me absolutely mm -hmm. thousand percent all right, excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to my uh, next question, okay? Should the wealthy be taxed more and be forced to pay their workers and employees better wages and give them benefits since they can afford to do so, or does it seem kind of unfair to penalize them for their successes? Oh, Joe is smiling, so we're going to start with Joe. No, I, I, no, no. I, 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 while you're talking, I said yes, real sound. I was like, 
Like, no shit. I mean, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they make more. They should be paying more. I mean, that, that's the way it goes. Not just find, find ways to bribe <laughs> officials to vote in laws to ease their tax burden and to push the tax burden onto the rest of us. <laughs> I mean, that's dirty. It's beyond dirty. I'm already rich, but I need to keep more money. Let's see y'all pay for the upkeep of the economic system, the economic infrastructure that's allowing the <laughs> business to commence as it is. Um, you know, it, it's just, to me, it's beyond ridiculous. Absolutely. They should, right now, they should they should be squeezed above a certain, like, you know, 100 million. They should be squeezed uh, uh, marginally, at least for all. Uh, was that marginal or yeah, the marginal rate for me should be at least at least ninety percent effective. They got loopholes and tax write outs so get they'll end up lowering that number probably on the, the fifty, forty percent some of that, but we should we should be doing that and putting a lot more money to the coffers of the uh, government the funds and the whatever that whatever that may go to. Um, even if it's to uh, offset the um, or tamp down possible inflation, if you believe in modern monetary theory, uh, which I think <laughs> that does is a pretty decent um, theory, but uh, anywho, so yeah, they should definitely be put put more up because they make more, especially when they get the, that that much money. Absolutely, no one forced them to make an income. If they want to pay tax, don't make an income. I don't know this this my this my, my think about it. All right, okay, fresh. Uh, look, yeah, um, obviously we should we should tax them more. Uh, there's a whole plethora of reasons why. Um. First off, we should uh, fund the IRS. The, we put a $80 billion into the IRS, and we'll get something between 700 and a trillion dollars a year back from people who aren't paying their taxes. Secondly, if we uh, tax Jeff Bezos $100 billion, Jeff Bezos will still have enough money to build his dick rocket. Um, this is not a, uh, this is, this is not a, uh, a hard uh, sell. The, the richest people in the world became uh, 1.7 times, uh, made $1.7 trillion more in wealth during the pandemic where the bottom lost that much money we saw the largest upward transfer of wealth and uh during the the first uh stimulus bill um trickle down is not a thing uh they look at some point like i i'm not against wealthy people but at some point when you're being when you have your little dragon horde it would be nice to like not have such a big one because if you have what like what what is the difference between a, a 180 billion and um and uh and 80 and 80 billion dollars you still have more money than your next like four generations are going to spend in in their lifetime unless you're just randomly setting billions of dollars on fire like at some point you win capital do you want to like if we build a system where it says at a certain point you just win capitalism and you have to start over again fucking do it if you were so good in the first place that your ideas I, i'm definitely going to that your ideas got you this much money, do it again. Let, make it a prestige badge. Let's make it a, like Call of Duty. Yep. <laughs> you still have 90 yeah. seconds, but you're good to go. So, all right. Uh, Teal. All right. In theory, my theory, I, would, I wish labor wasn't taxed at all. Whatever you create from your hands or your mind shouldn't be taxed. What should be taxed the fuck out of is capital gains. Sorry about the F-bomb. Capital gains. Like, I want all to right. discourage people to like have a society where they're not wanting to bring more capital, more capital, more capital. Like I want people to want to improve society. So I want to discourage people from, so if you have capital gains taxes high, then people are encouraged to reinvest in their businesses, not just sit on that wealth in, in that pile of manure, right? That, that, uh, that Joe talked about, right? So I wanna, I wanna disincentivize people wanting to build big piles of manure. And I want them to spread it around. And okay, yeah, because because right. look, they should pay more taxes. Like, like the U.S. Navy doesn't help me like protect my merchant ships coming from you know south. You know, Dole uses our U.S. Navy to, to, to protect our their ships coming to, to bring their products to, to sell here, right? So they should pay more taxes, right? Because I don't. You know, the Navy's not helping me, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I don't want to get too long, but yeah, that's just hey, a bit. You good. You good? Okay, Carl, hit me. Uh, yeah, I think they should 100%. I think uh, we saw, well, um, you know, as um, you face mentioned there, we saw that, uh, you know, the, uh, the largest upward transfer of wealth um, during the pandemic. I think Jeff Bezos made something like $77 billion, uh, last year, and, and Elon Musk made something like $140 billion. Meanwhile, a report came out that shows that these people pay less in taxes than any of us on this panel. 
Um, the reason for that is obvious. It's the, the tax code is rigged against the average person. Um, you know, the tax code is something like, uh, what is it, 2,600 pages. You know, it's over a million words, which is, you know, more than the entire Harry Potter series put together. Um, if you include legal precedent, which, you know, uh, a lot of these top level executives, uh, accountants will use in order to get these special tax breaks, uh, you're looking at something like 70,000 pages worth of materials uh, in total for the tax code. So it's rigged against the average citizen. Uh, as Tio said, I, th I think that the average person who uses their, their labor uh, to make their income should see uh, very little, if any, taxes whatsoever. Um, but these people who are raking in uh, billions of dollars and uh, using the system to uh, kind of even rig the, the tax system in their favor um, so that they can use all these special loopholes to, to, to get to the point where they're currently at. Um, you know, I, yeah, I think we should take as much from them as we can. Can I add one little thing, too? No problem. Um, uh, what I want to say is, like, uh, a, a lot of these uh, right libertarians love to say that, like, taxes are theft. But I love to say profits are theft. Think right. about it. Fair enough. All right. I'm so, on that board. Yeah, so, okay, so this is going to be, um, I'm going to limit these now, these, these future questions. I've got two more questions, okay? So I'm going to limit these questions to two minutes a, per, a piece, all right? So should there be a universal basic income? Tio, you start. Um, I think that's a Band-Aid uh, system that could work until we, uh, to make it to where people do. It's like I'm a perfect, a perfect example of working universal basic income because like I said, when I became disabled, at 30 years old and got my little disability check, it freed me to be able to pursue my entrepreneurial, you know, creation. I want to fuel creation. So yeah, I think UBI could help us fuel creation, but I would prefer that the society did it, like not the federal government. Like I would prefer like, hey, there's somebody homeless in our community. We feed them. Like we have civic unions where we have places where people who need work and, you know, we put them to work, we train them. We care about our community, and it does. I don't want it to have to come from the top down because it makes us lazy. As you know, I don't. You don't care about that homeless guy in the street. Oh, the government's problem, you know. And right. yeah, I want. Then yeah, that's that. Yeah, okay, sorry. Done. <laughs> no worries. All right. Uh, so we'll go fresh, then uh, Joe, and then we'll go Carl. All right, fresh. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so I have um, somebody in my chat yelling to me about the. Uh, the uh, Federal Reserve, and uh, they, they are right, the interest rates are too low, they're artificially low, and we don't really have a response to that if uh, we deal with the problem. As for UBI, uh, yes, that is, um, that's the thing, it should be better, uh, giving money to people helps people. Uh, uh, that's really all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> to the point, alright. Alex is gone yes. I think it's your turn though. Yeah, yeah he, uh, he, that's why he said two guys. Uh, okay, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Should we do universal basic income? Hmm. Gee, let me think. Uh, does no, a bear shit in the woods? No, right? Does <laughs> does a bear shit in the woods? Does a po pope wear a pointy hat or mountains tall? That's a fucking lily. As long as it's a left wing implementation of a universal basic income and not a UBI that's going to nuke every other social program, including Medicare and Medicaid, and then just give people a thousand bucks a month. That's a ridiculous um, way to do it. So we can, like I said, we're doing the more expensive thing, letting poverty exist the way it does right fucking now. Uh, just giving people 1200 bucks a month for adult citizens over 18. Of course, for younger kids as well, those, those citizens like 300 a month per kid at least. Um, would 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 vastly would great would great even business insider said that if we did a thousand like a twelve hundred a month for every adult citizen that it would grow the economy by like trillions over eight years something like that uh, add like two and a half trillion dollars to the GDP I mean, if we did it within eight years on on top of the savings compared to what we're doing now so it's, it's a lot of benefits to it I mean <laughs> like I said before way before I mean and I'm and I'm obsessed with it really as long as it's on in a le what I consider a left-wing manner. Not, that's a neoliberal, means-tested, nightmare situation. That kind of UBI is absolutely actually counterproductive as long as it's not top of current social programs. And I, I'd even go so far as to say, uh, you know, if people needed more social programs to, to support themselves and their families, so be it. It shouldn't be taxed, and it should be uh, protected. It gives garnishments for, for, for existing debt. So, I mean, 
I, I think we should actually go, we should go that far with it. It's an investment into the people, an investment in the consumers to stay constantly getting the things they need to survive, and then some maybe start a business, pay down debt, get into home ownership. So many wonderful benefits to it. So few downsides. Um, the but yeah, of course, absolutely freaking Lulu. That's that's it. All right, go ahead, Carl. Uh, yeah. So I don't. Uh, I guess I would just add in that um, we should def we should probably have some form of UBI. Um, you know, the our communities, our societies throughout the the years have seen a lot of advancements in terms of our productivity. And uh, as I've mentioned before, when we talk about automation, you know, most of these advancements, uh, the profits, the the extra um, you know benefits that we've we've created as a society or as a community uh, have all gone to the top. I think that it's, um, you know, well past time that we share from the profits of what we've all created, which is, you know, a much uh, better society than what, what existed in, in our past. And, you know, it, I think it's unfair that we make, uh, you know, some people uh, live in a state of abject poverty while, while other people, again, can own their 16th yacht or whatever, right? Um, so, um, yeah, I think it's undeniable that we should, you know, find a way to, to even out the system. Um, you know, again, we already have corporate socialism, uh, you know, so why, why can't we, uh, the people, get some of our tax money, um, you know, or, or some of the tax money to, to fund things that would actually benefit the average person, um, you know, rather than, than all of the benefits always moving to the, to the top. So... That's where I'm coming from here. Okay. No, that's completely fair. All right. Last question before I go on to final thoughts, okay? So, uh, once again, we'll keep this to between in, in within two minutes, okay? So, and we'll start with uh, Joe, and then we'll go to Fresh, then Teal, and then Carl, okay? So, start with the best. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Some, someone's good. cocky. It's I, all good. I, I all would right. say that at no point was I ever the first one to say it. <laughs> oh, you weren't? I thought you were. <laughs> oh, no, you, you let, let Fresh let fresh you go. Okay, uh, uh, we'll let Fresh go. I'm, my apologies, Fresh. That, that's not good. intentional. So. All right. In a perfect world, what would be your most ideal society as far as minimum wage for the workers and benefits? Oh, shit. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> um, <laughs> ah! Uh, Give me time to think about it. Yeah, but <laughs> as for the benefit stuff, like... Look, I, I a lot of it comes down to the social safety net stuff. I think the uh, you know healthcare should be covered by the government. Um, when it comes to like what a corporation should pay you, it really should just be uh, the wages, and that should be a, a living wage regardless of what you're doing. Um, obviously, that'll that'll vary based on you know uh, where you live. I think the best way to do this would define uh, whatever the baseline is for the poorest nation and set you know uh, for the poorest state and then set it a, like a dollar or two higher than that. Um, so that we can, and then, uh, other states can build off of whatever that minimum wage is. Um, uh, other benefits that I think a corporation give you, um, obviously paid time leave if you are, uh, well, you should have paid time leave anyway, but then there should be family leave. Um, what the, the ideal amount for that is, I don't know. It's not whatever we have. I think in the Netherlands, it's like a year or something. Um, it's, it should certainly be higher than what it is now. Uh, so the benefits would be, uh, that, and then I guess... <laughs> That would be like I think it, that's it. Uh, whatever living wage for for where you are is, um, paid time off for like vacations and stuff, and then parental leave. I I think anything else should be as as a benefit should be covered by the uh, by the by the government. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna say this honestly. Whatever whatever my, I imagine whatever my baseline is um, is probably further to the right than anyone else on this panel. So I'm very interested to hear what their thoughts are. All right. All right, Joe. Actually. Actually, the most ideal society, at least economically, not necessarily socially, but economically, um, would be what Germany has been doing. Um, with they got universal health care, they got many uh, social programs. If they would just do a left wing UBI, it would be damn near ideal for me because they already do something called co determination, which is a halfway point between cooperatives and traditionally private businesses. And they do it as a national policy for businesses over 500 workers to where workers have um, from their pool and their own, own worker business or whether, wherever they're working, uh, representatives put onto the board of directors up to 50% to where 
may have some control over the business or the larger business without actual ownership. I think it's an important step, at least for the United States and beyond, to build a culture of workplace democracy and to really get that into people's minds, what that, how that can work and other possibilities from there. So if Germany would just do a universal uh, basic income, I think they have, at least economically, um, again, they have here, pretty so close to what... If you want to uh, stick around for after it, I'll thank everyone who subscribed, everyone who followed. Uh, so just hang out for a little longer. We'll chat for a little, and then we will uh, we'll head off for the night. So, but if uh, you're not here, you'll still hear shout out. I'll put this up as a YouTube video, and then there will be links to this later. So, thank you guys. Love to live there now. <laughs> but that's it. Gotcha. Carl, hit me. Um. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think in terms of my ideal situation. Um, we would probably move away from the need for a minimum wage. I like that when we touched on unions or, um, you know, just forming uh, worker cooperatives, I'd like to see more ownership go to the laborers, um, some form of stakeholder capitalism where the people have, uh, you know, some sort of democratic say on the uh, distribution of profits within their organization, a democratic say, uh, you know, within pricing uh, would also uh, affect a lot of these things that we talked about when it comes to minimum wage. Um, you know, so uh, in order to make it a more well-rounded, um, more kind of controlled uh, environment where, you know, we don't have the government just kind of arbitrarily raising the wage and then we see all these issues that we've discussed throughout the panel of, you know, prices going up, uh, people losing their jobs, etc. Uh, I think that if we had a system where the, uh, you know, we move away from just the shareholders, the, the profit seekers from being the ones who control uh, the entire corporation, and that these things like, like pricing, like uh, employment choices are made by the people who actually work for these businesses, um, that this would be the ideal system rather than uh, anything that comes with, with wage work or anything like that. So. All right, fair enough. Tio. I'm disappointed in all of you because all of you took a very pragmatic answer. My ideal system, Star Trek or uh, anarcho-communism, where none of the <laughs> commodities that lead to the pursuit of happiness are commoditized. Like We should, would ha should have the most healthy available food for free for all our society so we can make humanity better and stronger and you know, not has, have to pe people worry about their housing, uh, people worry about child care. No, none of that. Like, don't commoditize that. They're like, only commodities should be luxuries, right? And, and encourage society to want a better society and better, you know, like, why is we so in this mode of, because, yeah, I know why, because we're propagandized, like, like, to think about money all the time. Like, why does, why do, like, why should I have to pay for food if our society makes it to where we can grow food so cheaply? Like, we, we give, you know, the air is a free commodity. Water should be a free commodity. Like, our society should get together and feed our hungry people. It should be obvious to me. So, yeah, Star Trek or anarcho communism and Theory. Well, I want to all... get to Star Trek. I want to get to Star Trek one day. Mm -hmm. Wait, is that later. space flight? Or is it the fuck name? No, I'm talking about... No, I'm talking about... The, it's no, for, the green, for the green girls. No, the, 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 hey, the classless, classless money with society. That's yeah, but that's 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 the yeah, side of course. You, you, the living to better like, ourselves, as Jean Luc Picard said, living to better ourselves. That was one of his yeah, biggest. Even Star Trek exactly, had exactly. Even Star Trek had a, to better ourselves. Had a state, even Star Trek had a state money. It was currency. I don't know. I mean, well, the Ferengi money. did actually. They had credits. They had yeah. credits because okay. if you if yeah. you bred a debt. Debt the first 5,000 years by David Graeber, he explains yeah. that too. Credit, I'm fine with credits, right? Because yeah. used to, like, you would do your neighbor a favor, right? And you wouldn't, like, he wouldn't expect you to pay him. It's like later down the road, hey, bro, I helped you build your fence. Could you help me fix my roof? And that's a mutualist that's economy how right there. Yes, exactly. Did you just have a debate about mutualism? Not I did, <laughs> yeah, with the cat boy. Yeah, oh, the chess are a cat boy. boy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so... Um, and before we go into final thoughts, I just want to, you know, thank my panelists for this evening because, like, I, I felt this was a good discussion. Like, everybody was able to get their points across, and I felt this was, once again, a very productive discussion. So, all right. So, once we go into final thoughts, okay, I'm going to give everybody two minutes to, you know, just tell me what they think thought of the panel, where they can find you, whatever you want to say. Whatever you want to say in these final two minutes, just let me know. All right. So, Teal, uh, go ahead and kick it off, my friend. I appreciate us being on the panel. I love that everyone on the panel actually was, was engaging, not like trying, just trying to win. Like my main goal when I discuss politics is to learn something new. That's my number one goal. 
My second goal is to teach if I can't learn. And um, I, uh, this panel, I think, is, is, is good at achieving those kind of goals because like this debate me bro culture has gotten to where we don't actually want to share ideas. We just want to win the optics game. So I really appreciate you having us on, Alex. Uh, like I said, I'm, I plan on starting to do some uh, content. I was doing a YouTube channel for a while called The Blind Bassist, but that was more from my music content and, and uh, issues for the blind. But I do plan on starting, like I hope Blind TO isn't already taking this. I think I want to start my politics channel called Blind TO. And just, you know, got to get the graphics and stuff and, and uh, start, you know, start doing like what you guys are doing. But uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity and you can find me on Politi Politically Provoked Discord and I'll be debating um, eugenics on Tuesday on the Politically Provoked YouTube. So check me out there. And uh, thanks again, Alex. I appreciate it. Absolutely, my friend. All right, Carl, hit me. Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to first thank you, Alex, for having us on. I think this was thank a great you. panel. Um, I think we all we all had a good time, and you know, and we probably agreed on on most things. And uh, I like that we each brought, you know, our own uh, little unique perspective there. So I think, uh, you know, as Tio said, I think this is a lot better to to kind of building these ideas that we're looking towards, uh, kind of putting out there, than a lot of the other platforms that we can be on. Um, you know, a lot of times we're focusing on pure rhetoric, you know, and if we're trying to win, but, um, you know, here we actually got to kind of the crux of, you know, some pretty uh, economic uh, processes, which I think, you know, um, people might still find enjoyable, even though it's usually a drier subject. So I think it's a good way to kind of put that out there. And I, um, yeah, uh, I just would like to to join again if I have the opportunity, but uh, if not, nice. I mean, you guys can uh, can find me over at Chance of Flurry. Uh, as I said, you know, I'm uh, I'm an anarcho mutualist. Um, you know, my co-host he's transferring into the anarchic space along with me, but you know, he's still a bit more right wing than I am. So it's an interesting dichotomy we have on the show. So if you guys want to come and check it out, um, yeah, I'd appreciate it. Have a good one. Certainly. All right, Joe, hit me. It was great, really great here, y'all. Support me, y'all being the backup. No, I was kidding. It was great being here. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I like being. I like. We were the pips. You made like us the pips. <laughs> You're glad it's night for the pips, huh? I don't get that. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, so as a, there's their their music group, and and I'm just a, I'm just a putz, but um, I'm just yeah, I'm, I'm just a putz, but yeah, it was just fun being here, and it's like, yeah. It, it's great we're all in agreement with most things, and it's good to share our own different perspectives, at least trains of thought and that sort of thing, how we approach um, solutions to problems. And, um, you know, it's definitely a change of pace than the usual, uh, you know, people get cut off th three words in and person, the other person pivoting and straw manning and insulting. It's like, come on, that shit's shit, so 2018, really. Um, we, we need to grow beyond that. Because it means a leftist, I try to be more... Um, try it's a key word uh try to be more uh try to be less caustic out the gate try to be more uh even tempered that sort of thing even to those who are nastier unless they're just going to be encourageable about it because i'm interested in opening people's minds toward the idea of workplace democracy at least partial workplace democracy pointing to living examples that sort of thing but um that's pretty much my mission my mission aside from others you know um, but, but yeah, thanks for having me on and y'all can reach me over at, at new socialist there on Twitter or on YouTube, uh, new socialist there, just type new socialist there in, you'll find it on YouTube. I do stream every once in a while, one at a time over on Twitch, same name. But uh, again, if you, if you listen to this name, if you're right wing, I'll, I'll follow you back on Twitter and, uh, you know, if you follow me, so, uh, I'll catch y'all out. Appreciate it, man. All right. Fresh. All right. Uh, so first off, I always think I win every debate I'm in all the time, regardless of anything. <laughs> um, I also do believe this is this is a, a little thing about debates. I think having smaller creators works um, better because we, I don't have to we don't have to play to an audience. Obviously, once I get bigger, I'm still going to be the same person, so that's not an issue there. Uh, I will come on mm. basically whenever, uh, Alex. Um, I, I enjoy this. Um, I do have to say though, on a uh, an interesting note, this broke my uh, streak of my last two debates of somebody arguing that we should bomb a different country. Um, <laughs> um, oh my god so, yeah. bomb, bomb, bomb. um so that that's a that's an interesting one uh look uh we all agreed uh pretty much on most of the stuff about minimum wage 
um you know we're all we're all various degrees to the to the left um if you uh if you're new or you've never heard of me i am fresh faces new ideas i am fresh faces new ideas on on twitch and on youtube i'm faces ideas on uh on Twitter, if you go to my Twitter, you can find the links to all my stuff there. I actually do have an Instagram. I don't use it. Um, it's mostly for when people put podcasts and stuff up that I do. I generally do politics. Occasionally, I do basketball. Um, I will talk to anybody about anything. One of the things that I've told the people in my chat, uh, if you subscribe to me, I'm going to do a uh, conspiracy-only subscribers uh, episode where we will cover, I don't give a shit if you want to talk about COVID, if you want to talk about David Stern rigging the uh, the draft lottery so that uh, Pat, the Knicks got Patrick Ewing, if you want to talk about Flat Earth, I will discuss it. I don't I don't, I don't, don't care. Uh, we need more people for that. Um, but yeah, look, I enjoy this. I hope I can come back again. Um, I... You know, if any of you guys, uh, Tio, Carl, um, if you want to join the Discord, I can put it in the chat, uh, Alex, if you want me to. or um, Go for it. Uh, you guys can follow me there, and I would love to just, you know, have conversations with more people about, uh, you know, their ideologies. Um, because, you know, the more you expose people to, the the better. Um, I, I know uh, Monday I'm going to post to have a debate uh, with uh, Havy's humor about um, socialism versus uh, Bernie's uh, social de- uh, democracy mm-hmm. economics. Um, so if you guys want to pop in for that, I, that should be around one. Uh, but yeah, I hope to, you know, have conversations with you guys in the future and, uh, this is Certainly. fun. I can't wait to do it again. Absolutely. So, um, you know, once again, I appreciate everybody and their contributions tonight. So at the end of the day, it's really important, like as employees, like I, I'm a firm believer that if you take care of your employees, workers, whatever terminology you want to throw in there, if you take care of them, they're going to take care of you. I'm a firm believer that regardless of what field you might be in, it doesn't matter if it's a low-skilled job or a high-skilled job. If you take care of your employees, if you treat them with dignity and respect and make sure they're paid a good wage, I'm not talking about just a wage where they can you know, function, basically get from point A to point B with their gas money or have to take transportation. I'm talking about like where they can actually provide for their families because I'm a firm believer that in this country, if we claim to be the greatest country, we should actually be – the greatest country, whether it's like affording good education, affording quality foods, making sure that, you know, people are able to go to community centers, what have you. It's it's better to just not just talk about it, but actually be about that action, honestly, because I mean, I'm a person that believes that if, if you create a good commodity or a business, you should also be willing to pay people a good, decent wage to make sure they actually are able to make ends meet. You can't just pay people just barely above the pot of a line so they can just barely make ends meet because life happens at any given time. Like, for example, somebody could get sick or their car breaks down or it's just it's, it's a variety of different issues. COVID was a real testament to the American spirit, honestly. And even though people are like complaining about, oh, well, you know, this, this constant government checks. Well, honestly... People are getting these checks, these uh, uh, COVID checks. It's because they need to be able to support and provide for their families, which is so important. Because if you cannot provide for their families, how can you really call yourself the greatest country in the entire world? That's my only my personal opinion. I'm not speaking for everybody else here, but I'm pretty sure everybody, everybody else agrees here. If, for example, even if we're talking about COVID, if another pandemic strikes, God forbid, or whatever religious affiliation might have if you have to lay somebody off because you're worried about considerations you should also be willing to take care of the workers to make sure they can actually provide for their families you might take a hit but just think about the you know what kind of work you might get back they will remember things like that if you take care of them when they're not working for you they're going to come back and be willing to work for you maybe even twice as strong especially if you can show that you the employer you the ceo are willing to take care of your workers. Now, do I think a CEO should be forced to do so? No, but at the same time, because I think of human nature, people are just gonna be people. There's nothing you can do to change that. Some people just need to have this little carrot dangled in front of them to understand what it could actually do to benefit them because that's what some people only think about. They think about making money and we can disagree with them all we want to, but I think that some people should see the bigger picture about taking care of those that provide for you and the people that work for you. And I'm going to close up with this final quote. This is from my favorite president, Theodore Roosevelt. We must now see that there was, there never comes any spirit of class antagonism in this country. 
any spirit of hostility between capitalist and wage worker, between employer and employed. And we can avoid the upgrowth of any such feeling by remembering always to treat each man on his worth as a man or woman, however you want to put it. Do not hold it for him or against him that he is either rich or poor. If he is a crooked man and rich, hold it against him, not because he is rich, but because he is crooked. If he is or not a rich man and crooked, hold it against him, still because he is crooked. If he is a square man, no matter how much or how little money he has, stand by him because he is a square man. Republics have flourished before now and have fallen and they have usually fallen because there arose within them parties that have represented either the unscrupulous rich or the unscrupulous poor and that persuaded the majority of the people to substitute loyalty to the one class for loyalty to the people as a whole and i firmly believe that that is a principle that if we have all followed upon this i think we could actually benefit from this country as a whole so once again i want to thank all the panelists i think this was a very very productive panel and i feel like we all the the purpose of these panels is not so much to play a gotcha game but i want everybody even the audience to learn something from these panels and each panel is to learn something from one another so once again panelists thank you so much i'm very thankful for everybody's contributions tonight and i hope everybody enjoys the rest of their weekend thank you very much i too man thank you for having me. thank you peace see you guys Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, that was good. Hold on. I have to check one thing before we go into final thoughts for this. Okay, there it is. Found it. Found exactly what I was looking for. All righty. So, um, I enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, I hope you guys did too. Uh, that was a that was a fun. It was. I mean, look, some of the questions they were they were not great. Um, uh, I think part of it also not having really a a true diverse, um, like like counter arguments was uh was a little detrimental. But I generally like the people on that debate. Um, John Jay, uh, Jay's joint. Thank you for being here. Um, so let me let me very quickly say this. Uh, Jay's joint. Thank you for the uh, subscription and for the bits. And uh, Lefton, thank you for the follow. I'm not saying uh, thank you, uh, Artemis the Wise, because you are a bot and fuck you. Um, anyway, we will be back Monday at 1 p.m. We should have another debate. Um, with a uh, habeas humor. I will make sure to find that now. If you are not following this channel, follow the channel. If you are not subscribed to the channel and you don't want to pay for the subscription, or you do, that more power to you. If you um if you don't want to pay for the subscription, then you all you have to do is uh, attach your Twitch account to your Amazon Prime account, and then you can have Jeff Bezos pay me because I do work for Jeff Bezos. Unfortunately, um, uh, other than that, if you are not following the Discord, you should join the Discord. It is uh, exclamation point Discord in the chat, um, or you can follow me on Twitter at Faces Ideas, and I have the links to everything. Um, I do have an Instagram. I do not use it. Um, it is literally for when I do podcasts and people want uh, a uh, faces ID. I think Instagram is ridiculous. Um, other than that, I enjoyed this. I thought this was good. I thought there were some interesting people on that. I would uh, I would be interested to follow up with Tio because I'm not entirely sure how his ideology works. Um, uh, I do like New Social Sarah. He's like uh, one of one of I consider him a buddy. Um, he uh, he's very he's like a left wing buddy that I can like. Who's, I assume he's around my size that I can have a conversation. Uh, hold on. That is... Yeah, the Flurry just joined the Discord, so that's good there. Um, maybe we'll have a conversation with him. I don't know nothing about them. Uh, I hope to do those again. So, uh, for next week, um, we should have the debate uh, Monday. If not, Discord or or, or uh, Twitter will, will announce if things change. Um, I'm still working with uh, North Countrymen to do the Hans um, chess style. We're still trying to figure out a topic. If you have a topic that you want me to do a uh, chess timer type debate for that you think I could actually have a good conversation with a a, a sensible right winger. He's actually a sensible right winger. I do like him a lot. Uh, please go to the Discord and give me some topics and I'll shoot them out to him. Uh, we are not doing any COVID stuff because he has uh, for for that. Um, we were going to do the eviction moratorium and then we decided that um, there wasn't enough uh, really enough to have like a really um, 
a really good conversation about. So uh, I think we're going to ultimately end up discussing the uh, the the infrastructure versus the bipart for the bipartisan bill versus the reconciliation bill. That's where we're sitting right now. If there's something else that you wanted, uh, you think would be a good topic of discussion, shoot it to me. As always, if you are new and you want to have a conversation um, through the Discord, let me know. I will have a conversation with anybody pretty much about most things. Um, if, uh, if it is a topic that I need time to prep for, I will absolutely tell you. But I'm always willing to engage people. Um, other than that, I think next Sunday we should have a debate posted by Independent Thought. Um, I'm still waiting for the clarification of the time and the day, but uh, right now he said he has two more members he's waiting for, but as of now, it is me, him, and Hardwood and Sock. Um, I really do hope Sprout is there. I do want to have another conversation with him and uh, just obliterate him. Um, but other than that, uh, I hope you guys had a good time. I had a good time. I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, so this will be, I'll post this on the YouTube. I uh, Alex will send me the link directly to this video again. I will post that on my Twitter. Um, I think he'll do it on Instagram. I don't know. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, I thank you guys for being here and I will see you guys again on Monday. Have a good weekend and uh, thank you very much.